The nation's fastest family of networks welcomes you to Brooklyn, Michigan, where today the population has increased sixfold, 160,000 plus. Here to watch NASCAR Winston Cup racing. 400 miles today at Michigan. The late Dale Earnhardt had two victories here on this two-mile D-shaped super speedway. And yesterday, his oldest son, Kerry, broke through to victory lane at Michigan, winning the ARCA Remax 200-mile race. Kerry's younger brother, Dale Jr., has also seen success here. He's awaiting the start with Matt Yoakum. Mike, 2001 has been a very productive season for Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. Three wins with three different teams. The only driver still missing from victory lane from the DEI stable is Dale Earnhardt Jr. But he does have one Bush victory at Michigan to his credit and pulling a number of teams in the garage area this morning. They all point to driver eight as having one of the top three cars to beat. Junior, how do you rate your chances? Well, if we got any car like we uh, had yesterday, we should uh, whoop some ass today. It just depends. Uh, Jeff Gordon ran good in practice yesterday, too, so we got to race him and a bunch of other guys, too. Uh, plus, we got hot Shauna Robinson in the race, so we might all get distracted there. So <laughs> we'll just see how it goes. Well, he hopes to let the domination commence from the seventh starting spot. Steve Burns? Well, Matt, Ricky Craven has been struggling for three years to get a once-promising career back on the fast track. Great run at Dover last week. Ricky, today you start fifth. Can you feel a win here at Michigan? You know, it's funny you say that. A year ago today, I'm sitting on Moosehead Lake in Maine floating around, and uh, I got this wonderful opportunity to drive the tide forward, and in 13 short weeks, this team's really come together. And uh, I want to pick up where we left off last week because last week we gave ourselves a chance to win. And I think qualifying like we, get, we did this week, we gave ourselves another chance. Well, good luck, Ricky Craven. To Speedway Illustrated's Dick Bergeron. As Shauna Robinson walked to her car moments ago, other drivers and crew members reached out to shake her hand and wish her good luck. When she was introduced to the crowd, they roared their approval. Shauna, everybody's with you. How are you going to run your race? Smart, patient. I uh, don't have anything to prove out here except I need to finish this race and learn so that I can be out here next year full time. And my goal today is just to be smart and uh, finish this race. Godspeed. Mike Joy. 42 men and one woman are strapped inside the 43 fastest of 48 cars that came to attempt to qualify for this 400 mile race on a track that dates to 1969. Muhammad Ali, one of the honorary grand marshals, as we go trackside for today's opening ceremonies. Race fans, would you please rise to your feet and remove your caps for the invocation from Motor Racing Outreach. Here is Chaplain Lonnie Krauss. Would you pray with me, please? Father God, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us to race here at Michigan. Thank you for the sport of NASCAR and the opportunities that it allows us. God, we ask today that your hand of protection would be on every man and Shauna as we race this race today. We'll give you the thanks for it. Amen. And now please remain standing for our national anthem. Here from Monroe, Michigan is Cherie, whose recent demo was nominated for Outstanding Country Music Recording of the Year by the Motor City Music Foundation for the Detroit Music Awards 2000. Cherie. Oh, Canada, our home and native land.
drivers, start your engines. The 107th Fighter Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Glenn Schmidt leading the flyby. Today, Jeff Gordon tries to close in on the Winston Cup point standing lead in search of his fourth championship. Dale Jarrett tries to protect that 50 point lead, still nursing torn rib muscles from a Charlotte qualifying crash. And Bill Elliott, who saw great fame in NASCAR with the number nine returns to Michigan for the first time in many years in a car bearing that number. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan International Speedway. Mike Joy with Larry McReynolds and Daryl Waltrip. Hard to believe in 1968 they opened this track with 26,000 seats and now seats nearly 140,000 folks plus a full infield all here to see Winston Cup racing. But Daryl, from one particular seat, the driver's seat. This place hasn't been that friendly. Well, the thing about it is, this place is aggravating. I mean, it's an easy track to drive. It's big, it's, it's very forgiving. You can go high, you can go low. That's your problem. Draft. You get it, you pass the guy through the corner. You go down under him, you pass him, you think you got him cleared, beaten. All of a sudden, you look in your mirror and he's drafting back up on you. He passes you back. You don't see that all day long. Just backs and forth, backs and forth. High, low, high, low, draft up. You can't get away from anybody here, and it worries you to death. But it's, it's aggravating from a crew chief standpoint because why? It's 200 laps. That sounds like a long time. But if your car's not right, you just don't get very many opportunities to adjust that race car, known for long green runs. Strategy, I promise you, before the day's out, we're going to be talking about strategy. Why? Because it always seems like it comes down to fuel mileage. And, D, you got to start thinking about it from lap one. You got it. We're set to go racing here in the Kmart 400 at Michigan International Speedway. You're watching NASCAR on FX. Forty three cars have rolled from the starting grid here at Michigan International Speedway to start this 400 mile race race 14 the Winston Cup Series for the year 2001. Happy to be with you today on FX. We had a brief shower very early this morning uh, but kind of cloudy overcast skies right now changes track conditions considerably as we talk about all the time. And we will be watching the weather all day long. So let's have a look at today's Castrol GTX starting grid. Jeff Gordon with his third pole in 2001, his third Michigan pole, and Ricky Ruddy was second here last summer. Mike Skinner, best qualifying effort of 01, as is Dave Blaney. Hey, OTIDE's looking pretty good there, guys. Bill Elliott starting six, seven Michigan wins here, the most of any active driver in the field. Junior had a third place finish last week and Harvick eighth at Dover. Oh, Owensboro, Kentucky boy there did pretty well here last year until he blew up. Ryan Newman, the pole sitter at Charlotte, made his first stock car start last June here in Arca. Spencer there, you know our man, he's had uh, some good finishes here the last few, few times they've been here. Look for him to run good today. Steve Park, seventh in points, scored, scored his third runner-up finish at Dover last week. Hey, I got my money on the two car today, boys. <laughs> Mark Martin, he just keeps climbing toward the top ten in points. Really likes Michigan. Four wins here. Dale Jarrett, ten top tens in his last ten starts. And Kyle Petty in his 40th Michigan race. And Hutch Strickland there with uh, Philippe Lopez as his crew chief or consultant. Doing a pretty good job these days. Bobby Labonte, the reigning champion. He's won here three times. Third both races here in 2000. Brett Bodine was among the ten fastest in yesterday's happy hour. Todd Bodine, he's won two Bush races here. Matt Kenseth driving the car that won Charlotte last year, and Shauna Robinson, first woman since 89 to race hey, in Winston Shana. Cup. Go, girl. Casey Atwood's a rookie cup racer at Michigan. Ken Schrader, his 34th race here. Daytona 500 winner, and he needs to get back on the stick, my brother Michael. And there's old Tony Stewart. Watch for him to come from way back. He's done it before. Elliott Sadler for the Wood Brothers, who have 11 wins here. 
Texas Terry Labonte starting deep in the field, but making his 45th Michigan start. Robert Presley had his best finish of last season right here last year, fifth place. And going home, Kenny and Mike Wallace, Rick Mast, rookie Andy Houston, and Stacy Compton failed yeah. to make the field. 200 laps, 400 miles, and Larry, if it goes all green like it did in 89, three very carefully planned pit stops. Oh, I promise you, we're, we're going to look at 43 cars, over $3 million, but here's the key number, guys, 50 laps. We want to do this race in three pit stops, 50, yes. 100, and lap 150. 50, 50, 50, and uh, you can come home a winner. But the old driver, he's got to take care of that. He's got to be easy on that carburetor. Let's have a look at which the cup weight standings coming into this race. Dale Jarrett nursing a 50-point lead. Jeff Gordon took a big bite out of that last week at Dover with his dominating win. Jarrett playing hurt. Torn rib cage muscles from the Charlotte qualifying crash. Tony Stewart's moved up to fourth. Johnny Benson backslid to eighth. And there's your point leader. And this is the part of the race. I, this is when you really get excited. You're coming down and get one to go. Your crew chief's talking to you. Check your gauges. Check your belts. Let's move the tires around a little bit, get a little, get them cleaned up. We're going to go green next time by, and buddy, your hearts are thumping. And he's walking around, he's talking to each one of those guys that goes over that wall saying, look, every pit stop today, green flag stop, no mistakes. Every stop's going to be critical. It seems, too, like this is a spotter's track because there's no one fast groove here. Your spotter's really got to help you find what the fast line is at that moment. And, and what you do as a driver, you, you look around who you're starting around, particularly if you're on the outside, and you say, talk to the two car, or talk to whoever's on the inside of me. Ask them to cut me a little slack on the start here. Ray Everham among the spotters today. And I don't know how many times you'll hear the spotters say, all right, clear, coming back to you, back to you, outside, he's on you outside, clear, that back to you. <laughs> that is the aggravation factor, and it's very high here. When Bill Elliott first came here, it was in a Ford owned by his father, himself, and his two brothers, little one-horse race team from little Dawsonville, Georgia. And uh, you see that Melling on his collar? A bunch of Michigan businessmen adopted him, and the next year, one of them, Harry Melling, took on the sponsorship of this team and later bought it from the Elli Elliots, and they all achieved great things. Well, Mark Melling, Harry's son, continues to own the family race team, but when they came to Dodge, allowed Bill Elliott to recapture the number he made famous with the Mellings, number nine. And the other team that he got the number from is 9-2. It's number 9-2. Yeah, 92. 92. And did I tell you how they got the 32 on this? <laughs> That's a story we're going to tell later. Okay, but you up. will. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. All right. Here we go. Pontiac safety car makes a hard left turn to pit road. And over 160,000 fans on their feet awaiting the start of 400 miles of racing. Next time we get back here, it'll be over 200 miles an hour on that first lap. Green flag. And they're off. Looking good. Already three wide as they head down into the corner. Boy, one car, Skinner, right down on the flat almost. Well, he tried to take it right under Jeff Gordon and almost made it work. Craven trying through the middle. Oh, Craven getting work. real loose when he got back to the throttle. Yeah, he got, he got crowded over there. He get to pushing up, and the back end will jump out. Early laps are real treacherous here. Harvick looking on the inside. Not going to take it three wide into turn three. Yes, he is. Yes, he will. All oh, the my gosh. Look at the battle for the lead here, Ricky Rodden, that 28 car, the Texaco car, he wants to lead this first lap, puts Gordon behind him. I can't look at any battle, they're battling all over Four the place. wide. That's a great start. Wow. And I promise you, we'll hear four wide, five wide a lot today. And Earnhardt. somebody has got to give when they get right there. Somebody Earnhardt has Jr. got to give. Earnhardt Jr. down on the bottom, racing Craven there for fifth. And Elliott. Boy, you got an awesome car when you can make it work around the bottom. Now you know why there's 160,000 people here. Oh, yeah. Look at this. I'd like to back that up and do it all over again. That was fun. And we've seen it all year long. A little bit harder tire, better racing. I guarantee you these guys will be three wide through the corner and won't think nothing about it today. Gordon wants to lead lap two. No way. This is Ricky Rudd. And they're four wide in the back with Bobby Labonte on the bottom. My goodness. We'll stand silent for lap three.
A silent lap three to honor the memory of seven-time Winston Cup champ Dale Earnhardt as Jeff Gordon takes the lead. Gets those five bonus points, all important five points in this championship. And Mike, one of the things as a driver, you always, you just pray that the car is good on the start because you're in all that traffic and you don't want your car to be loose or pushing real badly when you start this race so you can make some good moves and stay out of trouble. And one reason, D, you always want to lead laps, but getting that car out there in that clean air, get that fresh air on that front end pushing down, always the best place to be. Well, when you're back in there racing, people, you come up off the corner and all of a sudden you got to lift a little bit and you can lose as many as 10 spots as tight as the pack is right now. Big battle right here at 17th. Kurt Busch trying to slide up behind Rusty Wallace. That's Jeff Green on the left all of your right. screen, the Busch champion. Racing for Richard Childress in the number 30. Doesn't take long to sort them out, but boy, it's exciting for, for a few laps there while they're all bunched up. Battle for third. Dave Blaney, best qualifying effort in the Bill Davis car as he battles Mike Skinner. We look at Dave Blaney in the 93 car, spun out in practice yesterday, didn't hit anything. Dale Earnhardt Jr. lost a motor about halfway through the final practice, spent most of that practice in the garage area. Him and Skinner real close together in that 31 car, but had to put their race motor in without running it at all yesterday. And I bet if you ask Blaney, so I'm glad I did that yesterday and not today, because yeah. I'm starting up front, that could be big trouble. Blaney, who led a lot and coulda, woulda, shoulda won back at, what, Atlanta? Oh, early yeah. in the season. Yeah, I'm sure he's still kicking himself about that one. That's one that got away, there's no question about that. And a hello to his car owner, Bill Davis, who's been released from the hospital and back in uh, High Point recuperating. Or Thomasville, rather. Now, Mike, just to show you how fast the front cars get away from the guys in the back, here comes Gordon and these guys down to the line now. They're going to go across the line now, and the last car is up in the middle of three and four. That's how quickly they get sorted out here in about five laps, six laps. But all it takes a little side-by-side -side racing. They get lined up, they'll catch right back up catch to Catch right them. back up. We've completed six laps. Shawna Robinson showing patience, no, trying to bank some early laps here. I like what she's doing. She fell back a little bit, got herself in a position where there's nobody in front of her or behind her, and just get some laps. That's what she needs, but seat camp. time. The first job. woman to race in Winston Cup since Patty Moise in 1989. Shauna Robinson, who hopes to run for Rookie of the Year next year. We've completed seven laps at Michigan International Speedway. Jimmy Spencer coming off turn two has brought out the first caution of the day. It comes working lap 12 got a little damage to the nose of the car where he came down off the banking. I can't tell, but I believe he hit the right side of that car. The left rear looks a little askewed to me. This is coming off turn two. He's below Jeff Burton in the 99 car. This is when you get real loose right here up off the corner. The back end steps out. Click the outside retaining wall. Did a really good job of not having any further damage, but I think he's hurt that car more than it may appear. See right here. Trying to make the pass on Burton off turn two. See, that outside car is just pulling that when it's pulling Spencer around. That's that it takes so much air off of the back of that car when there's somebody right outside of you like that. You, you get that loose off too. Very lucky. Oh yeah. Spencer was in 12th place. I had a great run here. Uh, you know, he's been running good at this racetrack. From the middle of light cam, there you see the brush with the wall. Matt Yoko. And Wayne Jenks having a tough time getting that jack under the left side of the car. Four flat spotted tires for Jimmy Spencer, and he's down and away. A couple more pit stops. Uh, Mike Skinner is coming in, Bill Elliott, Kevin Harvick. Not all the leaders coming in, though. What we're seeing here, though, cars that their cars were not right. They know this is a good opportunity to get to pit road and adjust it. Plus, if you couldn't run 50 laps on fuel, good chance to get right. some fuel in that car. Maybe now you can do it on three stops. Dick Bergman. Well, Mike Skinner is a little bit loose on the way in, a little bit tight on the way out. He had a great qualifying run for this race car. This team bad needs a win, and they're trying so very desperately hard. A two-tire change for Skinner. See if he can get a little bit more speed through the corners with that. There's also a rubber, a spring rubber, laying on the racetrack. They changed that. Dick Jeremy Mayfield just came down pit road. 
they had a little bit of a problem on that left front. He said the car was free going in, tight coming off. They made an adjustment with Wedge on the 12 car of Jeremy Mayfield. A loose tire, unfortunately, unlike last week on Dover's narrow pit road, it finds its way to a halt without anybody hitting it. But whoever's tire it is, they're going to have to come in for a stop and go penalty. They're going to make this restart at the back of the field. And today's aerial coverage being provided by the Monster.com blimp here on FX. Monster.com is a proud sponsor of the 2002 Olympic Winter Games and the 2002 U.S. Olympic team. We are currently under caution, getting set to go green. Let's go back upstairs to Mike Joy and the guys in the booth. Well, the first 10 cars in your picture did not pit under this first caution flag of the day at lap 12. It's a quick one. We'll begin lap 15 under green. Jeff Gordon leading Ricky Rudd. Single file restart. Jimmy Spencer did stay on the lead lap even after that spin. And that 12 laps that these guys back here in the back have picked up on those lead cars could be big if uh, this thing goes green and they got to pit up under the green. Could make a huge difference in the outcome of this race early on. The other cars that did not pit, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Dave Blaney, Johnny Benson, Ricky Craven, Ryan Newman, Jeff Burton, Rusty Wallace, and Robert Presley did not pit. Yeah, you wouldn't pit necessarily for tires. I don't think that's the deal, but boy, that 12 laps, that little bit of gas, that could be big later on. Or to make adjustments if you're calling. Oh, yeah, I'm right. sure that's part of it, too. Probably guys are not happy with their cars. Here comes Junior around the outside of Ricky Rudd for second place. For more on Rudd, here's Matt. Mike, on the parade lap, Doug Yates, the engine builder for the 28 car, Ricky Rudd, caution Ricky to be careful of his engine on sticker tires. He didn't want to twist that engine too much, turn too many RPMs, so I asked Frankie Good, the engine tuner, how many RPMs are you turning here? He said, uh, you need to ask Doug that question. I can't get it out. <laughs> Doug said, mm, 9,900 to Steve. Well, Matt, Ricky Craven radioed his crew chief and said that his car is rotating well. It's turning well in the corners, but he's searching for a good entry. Car's just a little bit loose on entry. They're already talking about adjusting air pressure. They may add half a pound to the right rear when they do, in fact, fit. Ryan Newman in the 0-2, the third Penske car, restarted seventh. He's hung right with Ricky Craven, and he's part of this battle for third place. And he started racing 12th. Remember, he was one of the cars that did not pit. He was not even really scheduled to run this race. They came up here and tested with an ARCA car. They were going to run the ARCA race. Performed so well at Charlotte, they said, Trouble over let's on go the up back, there guys. and let's run this race. We got Sorry. a big race. Bobby 18, Labonte, 18, 18, 18 car. car and Kirk Bush. Bush got in the wall and 18 car got turned around. And Jarrett's in it. Or he's just running very, very slow after avoiding it. But Dale Jarrett was very slow down the back straightaway and lost about eight positions as now the field comes around to the caution flag for the second time today. Jarrett could have could have punted the 18 in the rear. I don't know the 18 got turned around when he slowed down back there, but I don't see any damage on the 88 car. So I think, uh, I don't know, the 18 car got spun around by somebody. Well, Darrell, with the condition of Dale Jarrett's rib cage, he might have just be, been very, very careful trying to avoid everything. I think we'll see Let's Bush see. get into the outside wall here, coming off a corner. There he goes. Kind now, of a, kind almost of, the same thing that happened to Spencer a while ago. Over, but he overcorrected and shot it right back out into the wall. Lots of damage. And then behind him, I think people are checking up. And here comes uh, the 18 car gets turned down through here. He and Jarrett were both way down on the flat. Uh, Daryl, see if this is a better run. There goes Bush. Now watch the right side of your screen. Not apparent. Let's watch on board from Bill Elliott. There's Jared. There goes Jared Labonte. Oh, man. Wow. Good thing that's paid right back there. That saved him. Labonte turned. Uh, Ned Jarrett uh, having a look at, at the replays. Yeah. On the horn to Dale. Car is fine. I think I'm, he probably will come to pit lane and get some tires, though, because he was way down in the loose dust. Here you go. Here's a great look right here. Here's Labonte. He comes off the corner. I believe, I, I think he got on the brakes. The car got a little loose with him, and I don't think Dale ever hit him, but I think Bobby started to go around. Wow, and, what a save. Oh, that paved area right there, that is a beautiful thing. I wish all the racetracks were that way. And if your car's a little loose and you do jump on the brakes real hard, it'll make it even looser, make it spin just like Bobby did there. Did a good job of saving that bad boy, though. Kurt Busch walks away okay. 
after a spin and then turn back into the wall exiting turn two. Oh, oh. FX welcomes you back live to Michigan International Speedway on Friday. Be with us for qualifying on Fox Sports Net as we get you ready for Pocono. That's 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific. And then on Saturday, the Arca race on Fox Sports Net, followed by the final practice for the Winston Cup cars on FX. And then Saturday, the Bush Series, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific from Kentucky. And Sunday, NASCAR this morning. And then on Fox, the Winston Cup race from the Poconos. So Jeremy Mayfield, your defending champ, wrapped up with NASCAR Victory Lane. All right, we're currently under caution. And you know, Jeff Hammond already speeds of 208 miles an hour, and we've seen a couple of uh, traffic mishaps. Is that because of the speeds, the cooler conditions on the track? Chris, I really believe the cooler conditions are, are kind of helping that because we're running a harder tire than normal here. And after a restart, just like we saw a second ago, I really feel like that contributed to it. You're looking at a situation where a rookie Crook Bush went down in that corner. I believe he had air pressure not quite built up, harder tire, cooler conditions, and all of a sudden it does get away from him. Here at Michigan, a lot of times you need to start the race with the car a little bit freer because normally the track does tighten up. So if you kind of got a loose condition, harder tire, low air, hey, spin around real right, easy. Right, out of turn two. And then this is a, a little bit of the aftermath, Dale Jarrett and Bobby Labonte. Yeah, you see right there, it looks like Bobby may have gotten a little bit loose, got on the brakes right there. Jarrett being right behind him may have took a little more air off his, off his spoilers. Plus, maybe some uh, debris on those tires, cool tires, harder tires again could all help this. Yeah, now DJ already, we talked about the muscle, the tear or in the rib area. This is his onboard, and this is what he saw going through that with Bobby Labonte. Yeah, as he goes down in the corner, he backs off a little bit. He sees Bobby gets a little bit loose right there and just barely gets by. He's very fortunate in that situation not to get caught up any worse than what he did. Now, what, what does this tell us about what we're going to see as we're going to look into Bobby Labonte trying to repair it? What a rough year it's been for the Winston Cup of points champion of a year ago. We'll talk more about the strategy, how this sets the tone for today's race. Let's go down to Dick Bergman. Well, Bobby Labonte has already made two pit stops, and he's planning to make a third one. The problem is the front valence on the car. It's all pushed up, and they've been trying with the pliers and hammers and whatever else they can come up with to get that valence up. This is such a high-speed racetrack. Aerodynamics is really important. Let's go to Chris. All right, thank you very much. As we get a look at Bobby Labonte under our second caution, Jeff Gordon, currently your leader, Kurt Busch having some problems. We'll be back from Michigan in a moment. Yeah, welcome back, everybody. And look, here's a crossover gate right here. That's where cars have been coming across the racetrack all morning long, in and out of the racetrack. And I believe that that's the culprit for these last two spins. Watch Jimmy Spencer down there he's not quite to the gate but the cars start crossing over and, and, and just before the uh, opening of the gate now watch bush here he comes he's up out of there and he gets a lot harder impact he's got a lot more angle when he goes into the outside retaining wall we're getting ready to go green guys green 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 21 laps complete 22 as they come to the line jeff gordon still leads he has yet to make a pit stop, and now he's got Dale Earnhardt Jr. on his bumper. Still a single file restart. Kevin Harvick in that 29 Goodrich car. He's one of the cars that pitted a while ago, got two right side tires. Jeff Gordon has led 20 laps of the Kmart 400. Look at right the, out front for two. There. Look now. at the run that Budweiser car still got. There. Still there by nose. Clear, clear. Well, he was one of the fastest cars yesterday Whoa. in happy hour. And <laughs> to shake that thing back and forth he's trying that's what i'm telling you about that draft he's trying to shake him out of the draft he knows he's quicker through the corner he doesn't want gordon to draft back up on him look how much distance he put way back to the throttle for gordon down in three and four but yeah he's trying to dirty the air up behind him where gordon can't suck back to him. see you go to the bottom and gordon's trying to stay with him so he can draft back up to him johnny benson coming for third on the inside against ricky rudd he's been coming and coming started back in the 10th position he's going to take the third spot from ricky rudd down to Dick Bergeron. Well, early on in the pace laps, Jeff Gordon told his crew he could hear him fine on the front stretch, but he could not hear them on the back stretch. Complained again about that under race conditions. So the crew has just adjusted the antenna, raised it up so Gordon can hear him on the back stretch. Oh, got trouble over in turn four, uh, three. Is that Rusty, Rusty Wallace? Up the wall. Rusty Wallace, way up in the loose stuff, and cautions out. He lets the field through because he's going to want pit rolling. Oh, yeah, he's trying oh, to get boy. down to get to the pit. He knocked the fire out of that thing. Third caution of the day comes working lap 25. I believe cool temperatures, overcast conditions, and uh, these tires may be a little harder than these guys are accustomed to is causing a lot of these problems. 
A lot of damage to the right front corner of Wallace. Watch the caution car, Earl. Get the right sides on it and get this thing going. Tonight. Talking to spotter Earl Barbin about where the caution car is so Wallace can get out without losing a lap. Oh, he gets, he gets hooked by the 66 car. Let's watch from Wallace's onboard. Yeah, that he got... You've got, seen the damage on, yeah. on the left front of the 66 car. Matt? Wilburn. Billy Wilburn, the front tire changer, has called for the Sawzall so they can try to cut away some of the damage front fender. You can see the hood is pushed up. Rusty has shut the engine off. They can't believe the bad luck they are seeing here today. Three quick cautions. Lap 12, Jimmy Spencer. Lap 16, Kurt Busch. And now lap 25, Rusty Wallace. There you see a little damage to the nose of Todd Bodine's car as Wallace came across his bow. I see a little... Yeah, he leaders are on pit road, but Gordon stays out. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car, but Johnny Benson, Jeff Gordon stay out. Jeff Burton in the 99. 24 laps into this run. Ten of those have been caution flags, but most of the leaders are on pit road. I think he just doesn't want to get back in all that traffic. There's a lot of heavy racing going on right now. He wants to stay up here in clean air and out of trouble. Dick Bergeron. Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to come in and get himself a bunch of fresh tires on that car, get himself a load of fuel. Tony Urey Jr. on the front tires. Jeff Clark, Sean Robinson's husband. He's the guy on the jack, always on the jack, one of the best at it. Four-tire change right in front of him. Mike Skinner has just parked. These are big, wide pits. Jr.'s got no problem. He's out of here. The mat. Ricky Rudd has already left his pit stall, four tires and fuel. He said the car was coming to him the longer he progressed in the run. So Gordon, Benson, and Burton stay on the racetrack. Yeah, even though caution laps equal like two green flag laps, so that was like 10 caution laps equal 20. We're halfway through a fuel run. That's, uh, that's, that's a little iffy staying out is. there. I'm, not, I'm surprised by that move. Now, also, Jeff Green stayed on the racetrack, but he was in the pits at lap 16, chose not to come back in, in that AOL number 30 car. So the strategies, they are very diverse here in the early going at Michigan International Speedway. 25 of 200 laps complete. This is NASCAR on FX. Hey, bad about a swing. Come on. Strike two. Another swing and a miss. That's what you get for midget racing instead of Little League. Oh! Hey, man, you're the stick and ball guy. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Looks like you're swinging, right? You got the right equipment. But uh, those shoes, I, I think it's the shoes. That doesn't look right. My shoes? What's wrong with my shoes? All right, we eventually got him cleats, and you should have seen him hitting. Next week on Fox Saturday Baseball, presented by Radio Shack, the Yankees go across town to take on the Mets in a rematch of last season's Subway Series, or Jason Giambi and the A's battle the Giants for the Bay or other regional action. It all begins with this week in baseball next Saturday, 1230 Eastern and Pacific. Check local listings for the game and start time in your area and watch the entire baseball season unfold across the Fox networks. Time now to get back to racing here in Michigan. Let's check in with Steve Burns. Thanks, Chris. Kurt Busch just out of the infield care center. Assess the damage to his race car. Kurt, are you okay? What are you going to do from here? Things are fine. It's just uh, tough to go out two weeks in a row real early like this. And uh, this was a new type of car. And new types of cars need new types of decisions on what to change during a race. Felt something early on, and we made the wrong decision on that pit stop as far as adjustments. And that's what got us in trouble. Glad you're okay, Kurt. Let's go to Dick. Well, more than a bit of a surprise that Jeff Gordon didn't take that opportunity to pit. He had been saying on the radio that the car was a bit tight. I asked Robbie Loomis if he could explain himself. He didn't want to, which leads me to conclude these guys are probably up to some treachery. To Matt. Well, Dick, Steve Park pitted earlier on the second caution, took on two tires and made a track bar adjustment. He was loose. This time, he only took a gas and go for track position. Also, the 93 car, no adjustments. They came in fit, and they are well back in the field. Well, if Daryl and I weren't in Kentucky next Saturday, we'd be at the stadium for the Yankees-Mets game. Hi to Joe Buck and Tim McCarver. Do you know they cranked it up last week on Fox Saturday Baseball? Oh, they did. They I did a crank it up. I bet the fans loved it. Now, wait a minute. If they crank it up, how about a let's crank it up on this restart? How about that? All right, strap your TVs down. Let's crank it up one time. Yeehaw!
Johnny Benson chasing Jeff Gordon for the lead as they come around to complete 29 laps. And here we go, three wide again. There's Spencer back in there. You know, after he spun, looks like he's going to be all right. Benson keeps working at it on the bottom. Right on the bottom, all the way off the corner. And when you can do that and still keep your momentum, you've got a strong race car. Got to believe that that 10 car, I know what we say every week, but you got to believe he's got a win laid up here somewhere pretty soon. You see Gordon on the high side, about two lanes higher than Benson, keeps that momentum right there. He's still going to lead this lap. That's two Hendrick power plants racing against each other right there. They just happen to be in two different body styles, one Pontiac, one Monte Carlo. Rick Hendrick seeking his 100th win as a Winston Cup team owner today. Jeff Gordon scored number 99 for Hendrick Motorsports at Dover. These two cars now, Johnny Benson in the 10, Jeff Gordon in the 24, Jeff Burton in the 99. That's the only three cars that have not pitted. And from provisional land, here comes Tony Stewart. And speaking of Rick Hendrick, we want to be sure and say hello to Papa Joe today. He's in the hospital and, uh, you know, he was just in there a few weeks ago. He needs our prayers right now. We need to pull him out of there. So get well soon, Pop. Here is Stewart's progression. After taking a provisional starting position, he had engine trouble in qualifying on Friday. She knew it was just a matter of time before he was up toward the front. He's moved from 18th to fourth in the points in the last seven races. That is quite a march. Anyone here a year ago. This from is a, what, 28? Way back, and this is a brand new race car, but they did the Goodyear tire test here uh -huh. a few weeks ago. Ran over 250 laps in race conditions. In 11th place, Bill Elliott. Trying to move underneath and up. That's Ward Burton just ahead. Talked to Ray Abraham. He, he said Bill was pretty good. He didn't know how he would fare in the race, but he wasn't over optimistic that he had win this race. But he said he thought he was pretty good. And there goes Jarrett right by him. Dale Jarrett, that UPS car, all the way from the top of the racetrack to the bottom before they got to turn one. He's going to pass both these guys. Kendall's in the 17, Elliott in the 9. Well, you get a run like that, you get some momentum up, and those good other guys man. lift, just team bit coming here. off the corner, and you can go right on by. Boy, he looked like Ronnie Bouchard at Talladega on the last one. <laughs> Boom to the bottom and by. Yeah, where'd he come from? Yeah, right. Rusty Wallace has made repairs. Now, the only car out of the race right now is Kurt Busch. And everyone on the track is on the lead lap. I think they're taking Rusty's car back into the garage. Whatever's wrong with it, they got to take it in there and work on it some more. Probably put a fender on it. Yeah, I mean, aerodynamics, the front end, you've, you've about got to have the whole front end on the race car here. You're running such fast, fast speeds, and NASCAR's going to make you maintain a certain speed to stay out there. Yeah, and at 200 mile an hour, you can't, you can't maintain 200 mile an hour with no right front fender. Boy, look at the run. Ricky Rudd in that Texaco Avalon car. Yeah, he got a heck of a run off turn two, Larry, after pit stops. He took this last restart way deep in the field, but he's come on strong. Battle for 19. Still outside, still there. Still out there, still there. Clear now, clear. That spot still is clear. so important. Kevin Harvick's gonna get sandwiched here. Hamilton on the outside, run on the inside. Got another great run off turn two over there, Larry, right on the bottom. Got to run on those guys that are running side by side. You get draft off of them, you go right by them. When Dale Jarrett led every lap here two years ago, the place he was strongest was right there, Darrell, off turn two, and he just oh, flew by him on the back. Oh, Ricky Rudd just about to run out. Sorry, Mike. That's he right, was Larry. just about to run out of racetrack in front of Bobby Hamilton in that 55 car. But that's what happens here. You're turning off the corner, your car's moving up, and the wall comes up, and you've got to yank it. View from the monster.com blimp. Looking at the competition around turns one and two and into that back straightaway. And Junior pokes his nose out underneath Kevin Harvick. Yeah, well, Junior and the Ricky Rudd are having a heck of a race there for a little while, but Rudd has proceeded on. He's right down the bottom Still of the race. Look how much he clear pulls Kevin one, Harvick yeah. right there. I mean, four car lengths in about All the distance clear. of about All 50 clear. yards. If you can run the bottom, if you can run the white line around this joint, then you've got an awesome car, and you're going to make some great They're time. 
teammates together. Michael Waltrip behind Earnhardt Jr. from the Goodrich, or from Harvick, from the uh, Goodrich camp. And a look back from Michael Waltrip's Napa cam. That's uh, Brett Bodine right behind Michael. Brett Bodine in 11. He was fast in practice yesterday in the final practice, so yeah, uh, he needs a good run. That's 19, 20, and 21st right there all running together. And Add still, Ryan Newman and John Andretti to that group. Still running very well. Kevin Harvick, look at the run he's getting on the bottom. And Darrell, we're seeing cars be able to keep that momentum off the bottom. And that's a sign to me that some of them's got some pretty low gears. <laughs> yeah. It'll carry that momentum off the corner. Let me Higher tell you, gear, you got to be up top. I heard them talking about 88 to 9,200. That's an incredible amount of RPM for this race. The only thing that saved you is 400 miles. If it's a 500 mile race, you wouldn't be doing that. But here it's only 400. They lean on them pretty hard. And it makes a huge difference. Blaney and Rudd for 15th place. Down the back straightaway. Let's go to Steve in the garage. Mike, with Rusty Wallace, crew hard at work on the car. Rusty, tell us what happened. <laughs> I tell you what, I really don't know what happened. I came down the back straightaway. Car's running great. I'm running 10th, I think I was. And all of a sudden, the 66 just drives right in the back of me and turns me sideways into the fence. And I don't know what the heck the kid was thinking, you know. I don't know if he got a, a good run or what was what he was doing, you know. But uh, drove up under the fuel cell and turned the car sideways in the back straight. We went head on into the wall. Rusty, can you get back in the race? You're in a points race. Yeah, I am in a points race. And that's the reason we got one shot to get the thing right. That's NASCAR's rules. So we're bringing it back to get the A-frames put on a control arm, get the thing where I can run it and get some laps. Thank you. A disgusted Rusty Wallace. Sterling Marlin running the bottom in that Coors Light number 40 against Jeff Burton, pulling past Burton for third place. Started back in 29th position. They came here with this race car untested, hadn't been to the wind tunnel with it, struggled with it a little bit on qualifying day, but they've been getting it better all weekend long. And I don't know what, oh, oh Bodine's Todd Bodine. down in turn four. Now, two laps ago, Todd Bodine had slowed coming down the front straightaway as if trying to diagnose a problem. Now, he has one. He hit that wall pretty hard, looks like. Caution is on the speedway, and remember, he's the one that got in the back of Rusty. Rusty was just talking about Todd Bodine. Caution at lap 39. Johnny Benson to lead Jeff Gordon back to the flag. No driver has yet been lapped on the racetrack, so there's no battle back to the caution flag. And just to pick up on Sterling Marlin, I don't know what the rest of the Dodge teams are doing, but I know this cat's got it figured out, and that needs to be their prototype because he's up there every week. Who does this caution benefit? I know it's three of the top four, but remember Johnny Benson in the 10, Jeff Gordon in the 24, and Jeff Burton in the 99. We're at lap 40. They were only about a dozen laps away from having to make a green flag stop. Exactly, and I still have not understood that strategy. Maybe they know something we don't know. Uh, caution fell just about right for them. See, what happens to Todd Bodine on the right side of your screen? Now, here he is. Going Sorry, down. left side of your screen. Oh, something happened. I, it, I think it's a. He had a tire. I think he had down. a left front tire yes. go down. Probably that fender where he got into the back of Rusty could have rubbed that tire and uh, cut that tire down. Daryl, I think he got somebody. Isn't there more damage now than there was when he hit Rusty to that left front? No, I don't. Perhaps not. Think there was. There's quite a bit of damage to that fender uh, when he hit Rusty. Caved it in pretty good. I believe that tire. I believe that fender rubbed that tire and cut it, and she went down on him. I think you're right. We're just looking at a different angle here than what we saw previously when it looked like the nose was just, just barely smushed. Well, that's the fourth caution in only 40 laps of this race. <laughs> and it makes us look good, doesn't it? We talked about a caution-free race and strategy yeah. and all that stuff. And but this race they always has a knack. Somewhere oh, yeah. about lap halfway, you'll but think a caution never will come again. That's why these booths have windows, so we can take all our plans and notes and just <laughs> throw them right out. But you, we don't, I always love to say, we don't make this stuff up. When they drop that green flag, we never know what's going to happen. But one call we did make, I don't, everybody's on pit road. Oh, yeah, I think they got to come now. Only car that stayed out was a pace car. Johnny Benson leads him down pit road. Steve Burns. Kenny Strader brings the number 36 to pit road. First stop, Mike, they only changed two tires. This time, they're going to change four tires. He's a little bit tight from the center off to Dick Bergeron. Now, Johnny Benson is pitting right in front of Jeff Gordon. Benson had momentarily stalled his car. He's got it going again. Gordon's car is a little bit tight. They're going to try to adjust that, get him to run a little bit better through the turns. The back. A four-tire stop for the 28 car. Ricky Rudd, as he is down and away, a slight air pressure adjustment. His car was a little bit too loose at the beginning of the run. Long stop for Benson. Dale Earnhardt Jr. beat everybody off pit road by a mile. And the reason he did, remember, he was on pit road at lap 24. They've only ran 13 laps. 
gas and go. No, gas no, and go. Tires. no tires. And that's what's making some of these guys. I think there's some two tire deals or some no tire deals. That's making them look like they got slow stops when they do four tires. Strategy, capital S, <laughs> comes into play, and it will all day. Well, as they say in Motown, the hits just keep on coming. Four of them so far. Attention, Kmart shoppers. We have a caution flag on aisle three. This is Jimmy Spencer on turn two, having some problems spinning out. And then Kurt Busch having some problems on lap 17. In the Sharpie car. At the fairway, we see Rusty Wallace got together with Tom Bodine and sent him into the wall. He's trying to repair his car. Then Tom Bodine actually cut down a left front of the pier and got into uh, turn two wall. At this race here in Michigan, there have been three races that have been caution-free. Uh, this not one of them. Already four cautions within the first 40 laps. The record for this particular race on this track is eight cautions. Is there a logical explanation, Jeff? <laughs> no, there's not a logical explanation. As the guys were saying earlier, it's so hard to figure out what's going to happen at a racetrack, especially when the weather changes like it has here. Maybe it has a little bit to do with the tires, but maybe it has a little bit to do about the good competition out there. Everybody doesn't want to give any kind of ground today. And it does shake up the pit strategy and some of that is going on right now. Let's head down trackside with Dick Bergman. Well, Johnny Benson had a longer pit stop than they would have liked. This over-the-wall crew has changed several times during this racing season. They are trying to find the right chemistry. Today, it's a new jack band. Doug Morgan is on duty for the very first time. Nobody here is upset about the length of the pit stop. However, crew chief James Inns just told everybody, get over the wall, get organized. Tires look good. To Matt. Well, Dick, Mark Martin will restart from the fourth position, trying to put that number six car in victory lane for the first time in over a year. He says the car was very neutral. They did take one round of bite out on that last stop in four tires. Steve? Well, Matt, interesting strategy on the 36 car of Kenny Schrader. His crew chief, Newt Moore, decided to put on four tires this stop. The first stop, they only took two. Next stop, they're planning to take two, stire, two tires. If there's another stop, they're going to go with four. So two, four, two, four for the 36 of Kenny Schrader. Well, check if Ryan Newman might have taken two. He's up to third place on the board. And, you know, week in, week out, we say, God, that car, that 10 car, for instance, is so close to winning a race. Wonder why they haven't won one. They've run well enough to win it. You gotta have the whole package. All you gotta make long. pit stops. You gotta make them all right. And you gotta make them fast. Look at Gordon last week. Dominated the race with had a 14-5 pit stop. Plus he had the best car. You can't beat people unless you can do the same thing and do it time after time. Yeah, all week day in, long. week out. Yep. That's how you win. Let's get back to green here to begin the 45th of 200 laps. Now, as we said, Dale Jr. took no tires. He just come in, got a little fuel, and he was right back out there. He thinks he's got a fast enough hot rod, I believe. He's driven off and left a lot of these guys by running that low line. Oh, but Mr. Gordon is going to say hello and goodbye. Maybe you ought to think four tires next time, little buddy. Well, he got a run off turn two, started way back in the middle of one and two. That's just grip. That's a guy getting back to the throttle quicker and harder and coming right on around you. Now, Sterling tried uh, Jeff Burton on the inside, but it's cost him a spot or two. He's back there battling now with Dale Jarrett and Schrader. When they put tires on these things, everything changes for a lap or two. You just don't know who you're going to have to race. Or how close. Well, and, and <laughs> we know Sterling's fast. He was up to third place. But look what happens when you get in the wrong spot. Here they all go, drafting right by you. It's a lot like Talladega or Daytona. The draft is so effective. Stewart squeezes up next to him, battling for eighth place. Todd Bodine has come to the garage. Steve is with him. And he's just out of the care center. Todd, what happened? And are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Uh, caught a left front down. Uh, before we get into that, I gotta say congratulations to Ray Bork and the, the Colorado Avalanche. Way to go, Ray! Uh, yeah, we—I tell you, this is incredible. Our luck—we've uh, had a fast car a lot. And when our luck changes, we're gonna be right at the front of the pack every week. Uh, uh, came our blue light special was good. We made a lot of changes this morning. Actually, about 12 of them. A lot of educated guesses. The car was great. Got all the way to 13. And going outside of Rusty on the back straightaway, and, and evidently a spotter told him he was clear, and I was up on his quarter panel, and we got together. I, I hate it for Rusty. He runs good here, Rogers track and all, but uh, our car was good, and, and he had to come in and fix the fender, put us in the back. I uh, got coming back up through and got loose, got the car squirrely, and I think it hurt the left front tire when I did, and uh, it just went flat going in the corner. I had no warning. Uh, started vibrating right as I got there, and it was too late. All right, thanks, Todd. Back up to Mike Joy. Oh, man, I'm oh, glad wow. you got back up here. Because, <laughs> boys, I'm telling you what, these cats are racing hard. Yes, they are. 
Well, Tony Stewart was up on the outside, and they were too wide underneath him, and Stewart almost paid the price as Marlin and Benson nearly got together. Well, it's such a chain reaction thing. If you're if you're in a throttle, you're going going to overcut. Your car breaks loose a little bit or starts to push. You got to lift out a little bit, and here they all come right around you. Gosh, Daryl, I'm going to have to put a new chip in you. You're bouncing off the rev limit on oh, that man, one. I tell you, we're not even 50 laps. I picked a bad week to give up Prozac. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> These guys are making me nervous. Jeff Gordon is opening up a lead. It was six tenths of a second on Dale Earnhardt Jr. last time by. Let's check him at the line. It's up to eight tenths of a second now. For an update on Dale Jarrett, here's Matt. Behind the 88 car, Dale Jarrett has climbed from seventh on that restart to the fifth position. They had a 14.7 second pit stop, four tires and one round out on the 88 car. The interesting thing, the conversations between Bob Jeffries, the spotter for Dale Jarrett and Todd Parrott, the crew chief, look over turn four. It's getting dark and getting darker. And it's only two o'clock, so that must mean Weather's on the way. We've been watching Mark Martin in that six car, though. He's been running the bottom of the racetrack. Let's drift up on the straightaway off turn four right there. He's been about two lanes lower than Dale Jarrett in the UPS car. My crew chief always told me I can do a lot of things, but I can't do nothing about the about weather. The weather. <laughs> it's going to have to go, man. And that's what I used to tell the owner. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Third place. <laughs> Jeff Burton battling Benson. And here comes Burton. Yeah, and there's Mark right down there, too, so the Roush car's running pretty good today. When you're in Detroit, close by, puts a lot of pressure on these car owners to have a good day because everybody from every motor company is here. All the executives, all the people that plan the budgets, got to put on a good show today, boys. You know, it looks easy, doesn't it? Looks like it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Guess what? Those guys are down in that corner, and they know that they got to keep that thing on the bottom of the racetrack, particularly when somebody's along the side of them. Entering the corner at over 200 miles an hour. Oh. Three wide. 40 is clear. 40 is clear. You, do a Mo you put old Mohammed on them. You float it down in there like a butterfly. And sting like a bee. Woo, if you hit that wall. Marlin moves in front of Jarrett. That's for seventh place. Schrader passes Ryan Newman. That's for fifth place. It's Gordon. Earnhardt Jr. Here comes a Sterling. bunch of guys coming so fast, I can't yeah. pronounce their names. Here comes that Dodge, of Sterling Marlin. <laughs> Jeff Burton's third. Mark Martin, Kenny Schrader, your top five. Then Newman, Marlin, Jarrett, Benson, and Stewart. Welcome back to Michigan, where the bright orange monster over the track today, the Monster.com blimp, gives you these great views of the D-shaped two-mile super speedway. And what they're seeing is the weather that moves quickly into the Irish hills of Michigan off to the west. A brief shower early this morning. More weather is on the way. We had quite a downpour during last year's race here in June, if you recall. And that may be why we're seeing the kind of racing we're seeing, because these guys are flat after it. And we're 45 laps away from the race being an official race. I mean, our goal is to be here till we see 200 laps, but halfway, lap 100, once you complete lap 101, it is an official race. Jeff Gordon leading Dale Earnhardt Jr. by a second and a half. Jeff Burton, Kenny Schrader, Mark Martin. That's the top five. Out of the race, Kurt Busch and Todd Bodine. Rusty Wallace's car still in the garage. And Wallace is going to take a beating in the point standings, which reward, rewards consistent finishes at the front. There's a look at it with the positions they're in right now. Now Wallace came into this race third in the point standings. He could fall to seventh or so. It takes one week to lose it. It takes two months to get it back, the way the Winston Cup point system is. That's what happened that, to Tony Stewart. Started off the season in trouble, and it's taken him a couple of months to get back up there. And, that, and Gordon is just, you know, driven away from everybody, and that's what's happening. That's what can happen here when you get up front and you can get out all that traffic. These guys back in here, as long as they stay bunched up, it's hard to make a move. One will pass, and the other will pass. One will go high, one will go low, like we said in the opening. But the big thing, once you get out front, you can really cut some good laps. Shauna Robinson, first woman to drive in Winston Cup since Patty Moise in 1989, and she is running in 40th position, but still on the lead lap. 
And, and, you know, I talked to her this morning, and, and you know, I, words of encouragement. Shauna, it don't matter at the end of this day if you're five laps down, ten laps down, or 20 laps down. You just need to be running at the end of this race. That's the way you're going to get that seat time. Because, you see, you can't, you can't uh, learn anything until you experience a 400-lap race here, a 400-mile race here. You've got to know what the track's going to do, what the car's going to do. Those are things that will help you the next they time you come back. Your and you don't learn those back if you're in the garage area. If you're that tore up, you're not going to learn anything. It's like coming here first time every time you, every time you turn, return here. It's like the first time. Bill Elliott moving underneath Dale Jarrett. That's for 11th place. Elliott considered Dodge's best hope for a win at the start of the season and started off with a pole for the Daytona 500. And you see how Bill could get under Dale down here in the corner. But uh, Dale's got that high line. He gets the momentum up off the corner. See, Bill will draw even with him. This that backwards and forth seesaw battle. Bill might be able to get away from Jared if he could ever slide up in front of him, but he can't quite get there. Ricky Rudd and Brett Bodine moving in on this battle. And that's what happens. Those two cars racing side by side, here comes everybody else. And the next thing you know, you're in a dogfight. It's just so good to see Brett Bodine in that 11 car having a good run. That's Robert Yates' engines in that car. Bill Elliott all the way to the bottom of the racetrack in that nine car. Here we go again. Daryl, I hear how aggravated you sound just talking about it. I can only imagine how hard it must have been to drive that way. Well, you know how you know you got a faster car. And you get him down the straightaway and you think, oh, I got him this time. And then you're on the bottom and you come off the corner and say, man, if I just had another inch, oh, another inch. Oh, I didn't make it. And here you are side by side again. <laughs> and here they are, just like Daryl said, side by side. And Elliot. you can't quit. I mean, Elliott says, I can't follow him. I'm faster than he is, but I can't get around him. Right now, though, a car that's faster than both of them is Ricky Rudd in that 28 car, but they're side by side in front of him. He's trying to figure out, okay, wonder which one's going to get the position here. Yeah, see, what Ricky will probably do is he'll use both of them. Well, no, oh, he may split them. He's going to go between them. <laughs> well, Bill said, you go on, you're faster than I am, and that's about what Bill said. But do you see what happens to Bill? He said, you go on, I'm faster than I am. He loses three spots, not one. Yeah, Brett Bodine had a run, and here comes Robert Presley. Of course, Bill could have looked over and then looked back and realizing he was racing both the Robert Yates team cars and that they were going to gang up on him. Yeah, possibly. You know, th this is a good run for Robert Presley in that 77 car. Remember, he started dead last, but this is the race car that he ran so well with at Charlotte. Top five all night long until he got into a crash. They repaired it, brought it here, and he's up there running in the 15th position. And he finished fifth here last year, his career best. There are the biggest movers in the field. Kenny Schrader from 33rd to 4th. Sterling Marlin, Tony Stewart, Presley. Man, I didn't Jerry realize Lodge. Schrader was running fourth. Yeah. That's about as good as he has run in quite some time. You know, some of those gains were through having a good race car. Some of them were through strategy. Hey, yeah. for, forget what I said about these team cars working together, would you? <laughs> well, like I said, possibly. Yeah, right. <laughs> possibly not. <laughs> Rudd battling Jarrett. You know, that's now for 11th place. Jeff Green just in front of them. The difference in the team cars, more than likely Jarrett will let... Rudd slide up in front of him and continue on where he didn't do that with Bill Elliott. Third place battle, Schrader after Jeff Burton. Schrader got a pretty good old hot rod today, doesn't he, Steve? Hey, sure does, DW. You know, his best finish this year is an eighth at Atlanta. This is the very same race car. Now, they wanted to test here at Michigan in April, but the test got snowed out. Ooh, wow. I got rained out of Chicago this week. I was going to go over and help Compton and those guys, you know, and we got rained out, didn't get to run. And here comes Benson into play. Kenny Schrader's teammate in that 10 car. First and second, Gordon, Earnhardt Jr., and a gap of four seconds from Jeff Gordon, the leader, back to that third-place battle. Jeff Gordon trying to dominate as he did last week at Dover. So far, Gordon has led 45 of the 63 laps we've completed in the Kmart 400. Welcome back to Michigan International Speedway. Mike Joy with Darrell Waltrip and Larry McReynolds, where 66 laps have been completed of the 200. Jeff Gordon, a second and a half out in front of Earnhardt Jr. And then this whale of a battle for third place. Benson, Marlin, Schrader, and Burton. Looking back from Johnny Benson at Sterling Marlin, who's trying to take away that third position. 
And we're yep. on our longest green run now that we've had this entire race. Uh, zooming in on 23 straight green flag laps. This is when problems are really going to start showing up. Yeah, and, and Schrader was right up there trying to pass Benson. He got down underneath him, didn't make the pass. Here come the other two guys right back around him. Let's have a look back at Shauna Robinson's race, historic, and that she is only... Uh, historians differ whether she's the 14th or 15th woman to race in Winston Cup. More on that later. Uh, but she remains on the lead lap, running in 40th place. I believe she just, she's not happy with her car right now. Uh, the car looks tight. Let's see how fast she's going here. She's doing 180, 190, 191. Probably ought to be doing about 195 to 98 right there. It's a little bit tight in the center. It's a little tight in the center and on the entrance. Just driving it as hard as I can. I'm not going anywhere. It gets, it gets tight. It won't go through the center, but I still feel like I'm not turning enough. Okay, just don't overdrive it. Drive the car to the car's limitations. And that's such great advice. For her right now, just don't overdrive. Don't get, don't get excited. Just do what you can do with what you got. We'll try to make it better for you on a pit stop. And what she's describing, it, it goes hand in hand. Her car is tight. It's not turning. The car is bogging down. And I felt like what she meant by not turning enough is not turning RPMs. It's not running, but it's because it's bound up in the corner. Yeah, she can't get back to the gas. So you can't, your corner's a lot shorter than the other guys is. Ooh, look at this bad boy here. Now, he's, he's turning all he wants to. Not quite a rewind of last week, but Jeff Gordon has led the most laps thus far today, 51 of them. Johnny Benson's led 11 laps. And Gordon experiments with different lines around the corners. And, and so is the cat right behind him, Dale Jr. He's been running up high around the top. They've been rim riding. But right now, Jr. dropped down. I believe he cut the lead down just a little bit. There he is right there coming in your picture. He was uh, pretty far out of the picture a minute ago. Knocked two tenths off at that lap, Darrell. Fox track shows Gordon's speed. We got to remember now, a Junior didn't get tires. Uh, there's about 10 to 15 laps difference in the two tires, two cars' tires, and that could be making a big difference in the times right now. 1.6 seconds separate the two leaders. Jeff Hammond. Yeah, guys, maybe one of the biggest reasons why Jeff Gordon is trying to get out front, stay out front. I saw a member of their team headed toward the pits with a load of umbrellas and uh, raincoats, anticipating maybe some rain. Dick Bergen, what you got going on there, partner? Well, we're talking about Jeff Gordon searching around for a line, and part of the reason he's doing that is that the car is getting tighter and tighter as this run goes on. He is particularly tight off turn two and in the middle of turn three. Earlier today, he was complaining about being tight in turn four. So he's trying to find a line that'll get rid of that so he can get still more speed, lead still more laps. And Daniel Jr. has taken another two-tenths of a second from Gordon's lead. As Jeff Green fends off Ricky Rudd. It's a battle for ninth right there. Jeff Green, another car, another team that we're not even going to run the race here by virtue of rain qualifying, messing up the Dover qualifying. They just decided to make this race up by coming here. You're on board the Home Depot cam of Tony Stewart, who has worked his way past those two and up into eighth place. Jarrett with them, Newman as well, and Bill Ellie part of that pack a lot of speculation about this 30 car what's going to happen with it next year you know they're going to run five more races this year with jeff green but uh, unknown what will happen in 2002 you I mean you don't have an inside line on that for I yeah i have you let me down there Larry. i think richard knows i'm a member of the press now he sees me coming he runs <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to have inside information oh jeff green a little wiggle there on corner entry for the bush series champion See, he's 11 seconds down there in the middle of three and four behind Jeff Gordon, the leader. But he gets it. Look at that run he gets. He drives right up to the back of the Pontiac. Gets a little but draft off. Gets Tony a little Stewart. draft, but he can't, he can't whoop out because the 28 car is right behind him. So now he's going to try a little different line. Tony goes low. You, that's, 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 that's what happens. You go low, the other guy goes high. You go high, the other guy goes low. You come off the corner side by side. Ricky Rudd looks to the inside <laughs> here. This be coming off turn two. Again, this is a battle for ninth. He's going to take the position. I'll tell you, Daryl, it may be aggravating for the driver, but it sure is fun to watch. Oh, it is. It is. But you just always telling your crew chief, say, tell them guys to leave me alone. Get come to follow me. Get away. Quit getting inside of me. Ricky Rudd's speed as he comes off the corner. 
Mid 150s down there in the middle of the corner right before he picked the throttle back up. Over 190 at the start finish line, still climbing to 202. 202. Just, sure, just a little over 200 miles an hour off in the corner. 202 following somebody, somebody following you, somebody pushing you, shoving you around at 202 miles an hour. For more on Tony Stewart's march from the back of the grid, here's Steve. Well, Mike, he has had a, an impressive day, but right now he's loose on the exit of three and four. He called into crew chief Greg Zipadelli and said that the right front tire is starting to go away. And that's because the car is pushing, and once it starts pushing, the only thing that's going to fix that car besides adjustment is four more tires. Yeah, and, and that's a good, smart driver, though. He'll, he'll probably back off a little bit because you do not want to abuse that right front tire. That sucker blows out. You are in big trouble. Sean Robinson being left by the leader, Jeff Gordon, gets to go to school on Gordon here. Gene Granger and Greg Field in NASCAR's two eminent historians disagree on how many women have run in a Winston Cup race, and the question revolves around Sandy Neal Lynch, who ran one race in 1951. Was that Sandra or Sanford? Historians differ. If you know, let us know at Fox Sports. We'd like to clear this up. Jeff Gordon, the leader at 76 laps. This is NASCAR on FX. Welcome back to NASCAR Winston Cup Racing on FX. And don't forget on Fox Sports Net tonight at 9, an all-access pass with Kevin Harvick this weekend on NASCAR Victory Lane. We'll keep an eye on Harvick, currently running 15th in the race. And Shauna Robinson, the aforementioned, as Mike Joe was talking about her position, running at the back of the field starting 32nd. She joined us on the pre-race show here. Jeff Hammond, and she, she made it clear that she's here to compete and to invest in her career. She's been racing since the age of 18. She's not just here to be a female who's uh, driving, and of course the best finish ever by a female in Winston Cup oh, racing man. is fifth, but she did make the point that they wanted her to wear a, a pink, uh, yeah. I guess, fire suit or, or driver's outfit. She said, no, just I want to wear what the, the usual driver would wear. She is very, very conscious of the fact that she wants to uh, 21 car looks like he's lost a left front tire also. As we shift gears here, Elliot Sadler with some problems here, and uh, we have a caution on the speedway. Let's go uh, back upstairs to Mike Joy and the guys. And, uh, you know, guys, I was talking yesterday about tire temperatures, and a lot of the teams were telling me that the left front tire, for some odd reason, was a lot hotter than the, any, any other tire on the car, which is totally unusual, Larry. I think you can agree. Normally, the left front's the coolest one. Well, it, it is, but remember, it, little, especially harder right side tire makes those old left side tires work a little harder. Plus, and some of the guys told me they were sucking that corner down with a lot of fender and a lot of rebound in the shock, so that may have something to do with it, too, trying to keep that nose down on the left side. Puts us under the fifth caution of the afternoon here at lap 81. We're just 19 laps from halfway, and the skies to the west have lightened somewhat. I mean, we're not going to call it a sunny day, but, oh, no, it, but not it, it, the dark storm clouds uh, we had a bit ago. Uh, we get this race in easy. We're running an average speed of 130 miles an hour. Let's see if we can tell what happened here to the 21 car. We're going to look at it here in a minute. They're, they're still cranking it up for us. Here you go. There he's down in the corner. See the smoke already coming out from under the car. It's a left front tire that's... Boy, Bobby Labonte had to Again. cut to the bottom. Well, that's a lot of damage. It almost looks yeah. like, I mean, the left front tire blowing out, I guess it could do that much damage to the front of the car, but I, I'm surprised how much damage it's done to the nose. Darrell, the skid marks from that start just about 300 feet past the start-finish line. I guess if that carcass gets to wailing, it, it, around can, it can really do some damage. Oh, yeah. Everybody to pit road. Only two cars a lap down. Ron Hornaday, Shauna Robinson, Steve Burns. Larry, let's see if Kenny Schrader takes two or four right side tires going on. Former NFL defensive lineman Tim Goad is the jack man. They will change four tires on the 36. No chassis adjustments. Tires only for Kenny Schrader to Dick Bergeron. Jeff Gordon is on pit road. They better remember to clean the grill because there's a big piece of plastic that's on the grill. If they don't get that off, they are going to have a problem with it. Pitting right in front of him, Johnny Benson of the number 10 car. To Matt. In the center of your screen, Dale Earnhardt Jr. just pulling away. They made an air pressure adjustment in the right front and left rear. He said the car was real loose on entry. Skates the nose in the center, but very good off. 17.3 seconds. 
Jeff Gordon's crew did get that piece uh, that was in front of the grill. Someone reached out and grabbed that before he took off. Well, great job by Sterling Marlins team to get him out in second place there, right behind Gordon. Uh, those guys are really, it, you know, it makes such a big difference, Larry. You know this as a crew chief. When the car's running good and everything's going well, how pumped up everybody gets. It's easy to keep that crew pumped up, but you know who always seen it pump up the most? That old driver. Oh, he yeah. He hit the end of pit road knowing he gained positions. He always said, a lot easier to beat him on pit road than it is on that racetrack. Amen, brother. Now, they reached to the front of Jeff Gordon's car to get that piece. I'm not sure if they got it all uh, that was in front of the grill. <laughs> uh, that's not going to hurt anything. Piece of cake. Okay. Don't worry. Be happy. 82 laps complete. 118 to go here at Michigan. Welcome back to Michigan International Speedway, where we're working the tail end of the fifth caution of the day. Jimmy Spencer, the first one, spinning at turn two. Kurt Busch crashing at turn two. Rusty Wallace crashing in turn three. Todd Bodine at turn one. And a left front tire going up on Elliott Sadler's car bringing out this most recent caution that brought everyone to pit road. And I believe what we're seeing there is a thumbs up sign that the piece of debris has gone off Jeff Gordon's car. Okay. Well, Gordon came in and went out first. Dale Earnhardt Jr., though, lost four spots on pit road. And those guys had a, just right at a 17-second stop. It wasn't a few, few years ago. You, you was the man, man if you had a 17-second four-tire pit stop. You had the world championship pit crew. But that Gordon group, that 24 bunch, in first, out first. There they are. Well, last week they ripped off that 14-plus second stop at Dover on the final pit stop when they needed it most. And their next stop was victory lane. And make a difference. There you see the debris is gone off of the grill. Yeah, it's uh, hung up there on the hood pin. It's just a little piece of tape or something. We talk about front downforce. I want you to look how the tape configuration on the top of the grill. They've got the left side taped up. Reason being, that's the corner where you want to plant. That's the corner that makes that car turn. Any tape on the grill, always like to see it on that left side, putting down force on that left front. Yeah, it's better to do it that way, let the, let the air do it, than it is to mechanically have to do it, which sometimes upsets the car. How dominant has Jeff Gordon been on the racetrack? He's the first driver to lead 1,000 laps this season. In second place, Steve Park, less than half that amount. Wow. Wow. Steve Burns. Well, Larry, that tape adjustment is exactly what Kenny Schrader did. It's just a piece of red duct tape that goes on the nose of the car attached to a tie wrap. That was the tuning adjustment they made on the 36 of Kenny Schrader. Dick Bergeron. Johnny Benson looking for his first career win in 175 career starts. Not exactly as happy with the car as he might have been. A little loose in, a little bit tight in the center. They adjusted for all of that. He wishes he had more RPM. He's not getting as much as in practice. To Matt. Well, Dick, Mark Martin came in, took on tires. They also made a wedge adjustment, putting two rounds of bite in, one pound out in the right rear. Mark said the car was just a little bit too free. They're hoping to tighten him up. Let me tell you, when, it, when Mark Martin says the car is too free, that baby's just about ready to spin out because he can <laughs> drive one of them loose. I guarantee you that. Almost 140,000 permanent seats here at Michigan International Speedway and all they had to sell was the space in front of them because hardly anybody's had a chance to sit down. We're nearing halfway here at Michigan International Speedway. This car on FX is brought to you by Budweiser. The crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beef. This Cleanup finishing up down in turn one here at Michigan International Speedway. 86 of 200 laps completed. The youngest driver in today's race, Kurt Busch, age 22. He'll turn 23 later this summer. The oldest driver, Kenny Strader, turned 46 on May 29th. But it's time for Pep Boys Trivia. Oh, oh that no. Music? I know it's oh, coming. No. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Who is the oldest driver to win a NASCAR Winston Cup race? CW knows old drivers. I know old drivers real good. Harry Gant. How old was he? 52. 52 years and 219 days when he won here in August of 92. I'm corrected. The youngest driver is Casey Atwood in this race. He is but 20 years old. Mr. September. He had a great fall season. I think it was about 1992. Yes, he did. Well, Tony Stewart on pit road as we end this caution period. Steve? 
Well, Mike, they had to bring the number 20 car back in and make sure all the lug nuts were tight on the left rear tire. When they did so, they took the opportunity to top off with gas. You're going to be on pit road. You need to leave there every time with that tank completely full. Let me tell you, many caution lapses we've ridden around here, if I was at uh, probably out of the top 20, I'd be on pit road topping my bad boy up. Well, now, that, that's a smart call by Greg Zipidelli because after they left their pit, they were informed they had to come back tighten the lug nut. So you wait until your very last opportunity before you go green. Yep. And then the you can stretch that fuel mile and top her up. Because fuel is every time we get closer and closer to the end, it's getting more and more critical as to who can make it. Well, this would be the second time Stewart has had to come from the tail end today. Remember, he started way back in provisional land. And what about his Tony Stewart's teammate, the defending Winston Cup champion, Bobby Labonte? Presently in 19th place. Problem he got now is his single file restart. Leaders down here going into three. Tony is not even in the middle of the back straightaway yet. And he's going to be about a turn behind when they drop the green flag. Talk about track temperature. Track's cooling down with these clouds. Started out at 104 degrees. Cooled down to 96 degrees. That'll make the cars turn a little more RPMs, a little more grip through the corners. And what do you say, guys? Let's crank it up one more time. Before we do, remind you, Ricky Rudd gained four spots in the pits. He'll restart third, and Bill Elliott gained four spots. He'll restart eight. Now we'll crank it up. All right. All right. Sterling Marlin, keep an eye on him. On the break, Gordon, your leader, Marlon Rudd and Earnhardt Jr. fight for the front four spots. That Budweiser car, he is on a mission. Well, now he's on the same tires as everybody else. He's got four freshmen, too, so if he's got anything, now it's time to use it. Here comes Benson in the 10. Remember Johnny Benson's very first race here? He drove a Bush car owned by <laughs> Ernie Irvin. I know what happened, 1993, <laughs> and he went tumbling down the back straightaway. And that particular car right now, Ernie has it in his lake as a bass feeding. <laughs> <laughs> bass feeding. But back in those days, there was no pavement back there. Like what we saw with Jared and the Labonte, then it was all grass, and he got off in that grass, and up she went. That was uh, when he was winning all the ASA races, Benson was. Benson edging up behind Jeff Burton. Running in sixth place. Old motor's really humming in. 8,700 down the back stretch. And that's the short shoot. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till you get over here on the front one. Boy, you hear, hear him picking that throttle up way before the center of the corner. A little bit of brake as he got down in the corner. Just touch that brake. Oh, that's a confidence thing. The driver's got to know that brake is there. He doesn't have to do anything. He just got to know it's there. Over 8,800 RPMs right at 200 miles an hour down into turn one. A little bit of brake again, picking that throttle up. He's into it, wide open. Play Darryl, four off the corner. Darrell, why would you feed in a little bit of brake when, you, when you're getting back into the throttle? Well, actually, you, these guys drive with both feet, obviously, braking with one, gas with the other. And you're going to ride that brake. Even though you're starting to push that gas pedal down, you're going to have your foot laying on that brake just for an instant. It really isn't doing anything again, Mike. It just is a comfort thing. Talking about comfort, Jeff Gordon, he don't have that comfortable lead no more. Sterling Marlin in that course car, that Dodge right on the back bumper here. Yeah, but the comfort he has is all that open real estate in front of him. That, he's had nobody in front of him for most of the day. He's led 74 of the 92 laps. Look at the run right here. Sterling Marlin in that Dodge. Off turn two, side by side. He got him. I think Gordon will probably let him slide up in front of him. Are you going to let me in? Are you going to let me in? But Gordon's going to go to the high side. No, you're not. No, he'll get that <laughs> momentum up on that top groove. Now, here we go, side by side. And here's going to come the 28. The eight, the 10. 
This is their chance to catch up and make a real race out of it. Watch Ricky Rudd. He'll go to the bottom of the He'll racetrack right here. He got wide. the run. Thought better of it. Not a good move. I mean, you're going to put somebody in harm's way when you go down under them like that. Sterling knows he doesn't need to be up there beside Gordon. But when he, you see what happens? He says, okay, I'm going to fall back in line. And here's Ricky Rudd all over him. Rudd got a great run through the middle of the corner, but couldn't let the car sweep out. Yeah. That cost him. Yeah, you got to have the whole racetrack. Meanwhile, while this has been going on, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the Budweiser car, he's right on the back bumper, Ricky Rudd. He's going to go to the bottom of the racetrack for third position. And here, again, you, you could run, they could run lap after lap. Now you got him in. See, these smart guys know what to do. That's what frustrates you. The smart guys know what to do. And you get back in here a little further, they don't always seem like they know what they want to do. If a guy catches you, there's a reason. Yeah, let him go. Follow him. He's faster. Now, the fellow who's been leading the second pack, Mark Martin, has now backed up to 11th place. Matt? Mike, on Mark Martin's last pit stop, he entered pit road in the eighth position. Nothing wrong with the pit stop as far as the over-the-wall guys, but during that stop, the wedge wrench broke in the back window. So they lost some time, maybe a split second or so, trying to get this wedge wrench out of the back window, and that cost him two spots on pit road. Ouch. Terry Labonte running up high. Keeping those flakes crisp, he is in 13th position. After, I believe he took a provisional, too. Started 42nd, yep. next to last. Dicing and slicing with Ward Burton and Jeremy Mayfield. You know, he's the only driver this year that had started every race that has not led a lap. Two-time Winston Cup champ. Mayfield had a pretty good hot rod in practice, but uh, right now he's running in 14th place right there with Dave Blaney. Yeah, he's kind of just hung up. I mean, he just can't seem to get, can't break out, and by the time he does, the leaders are long gone. It's the reason the work performed on pit road can be so important. Don't get me back in this traffic. No. The two Bill Davis uh, cars working a tag team there. You saw Ward Burton and Dave Blaney together. There's the front four, front six, and the pack. Just, just so you know, all those first uh, seven cars, those first seven cars are all running the same speed on the clock. All of them are running in the 50s. 40, 50. Three laps to halfway when they come around as Kevin Harvick works his way under Bill Elliott. Harvick, the subject of NASCAR Victory Lane tonight at 9 on Fox Sports Net. They'll give him... The whole weekend, you'll follow Kevin Harvick and what a Winston Cup driver goes through on a race weekend. There, that's the 10th place race. I don't know if I was uh, Harvick. I don't know if I'd take on Ali right there. He'd rather reach over and punch him out. I know if Ali was in there, that's what he'd do. The boy, you passed me. You're going to pay for that. 12 rounds or 200 laps, whatever comes first here at Michigan. Two and a half laps to halfway. Jeff Gordon leading Sterling Marlin by just a matter of two car lengths and Dale Earnhardt Jr. looking in. It's about 1.2 seconds from the leader to fourth place, Ricky Rudd, then Johnny Benson, Jeff Burton, and Dale Jarrett. This is NASCAR on FX. Welcome back to the Kmart 400, Michigan International Speedway in Brooklyn, Michigan. And after 101 laps, the race official, Jeff Gordon leading Sterling Marlin. And Jeff Hammond, we talked in the pre-race show about the, at least in the manufacturer's points race, a Chevy slightly leading Ford. But Dodge has not won a race this year. You said they'll at least win a couple. When we've talked to Ray Evernham, he said, look, we're a third of the way in the first season of what is a five-year plan. Even though they made a splash at Daytona, they've yet to win a race. Well, you, you're sitting here right now, you watch the Sterling Marlin. We touched on the fact that team has been very, very consistent all year long, a couple times early this year. He was in a position to win a race, and here we find him again. Halfway through this race, he's in position once again to take advantage of maybe what's going on here with the Dodge contingent. Now, there was some talk about the NASCAR maybe giving Dodge a break with a, an engine block that would weigh or have a lighter weight. Explain how that would benefit the team. This is a new, totally new package that Dodge put together. This engine actually weighs about 30 pounds more than the other competitors as far as Ford or Chevrolet. And they've been trying to work a way to, to make the block lighter. But because of the way NASCAR does things, you have to get approval on it. They didn't have time to go back and re re redefine the block and make it lighter. They finally got it, I think, to the point where they're happy with it, and they've submitted it to um, 
NASCAR for approval, so if they approve it, then they'll get a chance to make the car a little bit lighter on the nose. While we're talking uh, engines, you got to look at the Bill Elliott, of course, who has uh, seven victories here, the most of any uh, active uh, driver. How about the NASCAR consideration uh, on uh, the idea of using a single engine for weekends? Again, it's another one of those uh, efforts for NASCAR to make things a little more economical for the teams, also to possibly help them get through some of the uh, testing that needs to be done. It's a great idea, and they're going to try it out, I think, coming up here at Loudon. It should be a big advantage for a lot of the teams, especially the independent teams or the lower-budget teams. And you think they'll enforce that uh, for just some races or across the board, maybe not have it in Daytona? I think they'll start out with some of the half-mile races, three-quarter mile races, shorter races to see how it does, get an assessment on it, and move from there. Kevin Harvick, you get a look, and uh, don't forget NASCAR Victory Lane on Fox Sports Net tonight at the 9 o'clock, the all-access pass on his weekend as we get a look at Jeff Gordon leading the Sterling Marlin with 96 laps to go here in Michigan. Let's go back upstairs to Darrell Waltrip, Larry McReynolds, and Mike Joy. Well, that two-car battle for the lead has become three, and it's about to be four. As Dale Earnhardt Jr. has caught Jeff Gordon and Sterling Marlin. He's been running right around the bottom of this racetrack. He's been gaining on these guys about uh, a tenth and a half, tenth a lap, and uh, he's right on the back of them right now. You see Ricky Rudd in the 28 Texaco car. He's inching up there as well. For the Rusty Wallace fans, he's back on the racetrack, some 80 laps down, just trying to make circles, make laps, make a few points. Yeah, and Dale Jr., he can get that. He can get down real low in the middle of both corners, but he's got to have the whole racetrack to make that work. When he exits the corner, he's got to be able to go all the way out to the wall, and that's going to cause him some problems when he starts getting up here trying to pass these guys. Now, Ricky Rudd is closing. He was a second off the lead that lap. Here goes Marlin. He's got a pretty good run off of two this time. Looking pretty good right there. Had to fall back in line, but he had a heck of a run. He gets off a two mighty off. He gets off there strong, stronger than the 24 does. Jeff Gordon in the 24 car, he keeps running the high side of the racetrack. And he's going to run about the middle of the racetrack right here through three and four, but he drifts it up right there off turn four, keeps those RPMs up there. The thing I, you never know for sure about Jeff Gordon, even when you're following him and when you're watching him like we are, how much does he have left? Is he just keeping everybody at bay? Is he just sitting there and just letting everybody run behind him? Can he, when he comes time, step it up a notch? You see here on Fox Tracks, Ricky Rudd had that interval down inside of one second. Now it's pretty stable. Let's see what he does. Coming off turn two has been Rudd's strong spot. The only guy in those four guy, uh, cars that I know isn't holding back anything, he's in that red car with eight on the side of it. And he is holding back nothing. racetrack so smooth and you just always love coming here because again the characteristics of your car your driver can move it around you've got so many different racing grooves it's not right around the bottom all the time you can move that car around and make your car so much better oh i can't tell you how many times i've had jeff or whomever call in and say just find you a place to run find a place where the car will work don't just ride around at the bottom or the top find a place to make it work now watch the five, Terry Labonte, and the 30 of Jeff Green. They're about a lane and a half above Mayfield and Blaney. The cars are battling in turns one and two. But watch them when they get down to turn three here. It's almost like the racetrack isn't wide enough for them. <laughs> well, they keep going up, and something's going to get in their way here for long. There he goes, There's Terry. The five up. <laughs> they're <laughs> right up there. They're all running in different agendas. They're way up. They're just about out of racetrack up there in, in the Harry Gant group. close there with Mayfield. Boy, Mark's got, I don't know what Mark knows. Uh, I don't know if he's looked in his mirror or not, but he's got some company coming. This is a battle 12th through 20th. Right in one pack. <laughs> 18 car All right up in the middle of that pack, too. Now, here's Jeff Burton at sixth place, which is a great run for this team. Boy, they really struggled uh, at Dover last week. I tell you, I don't think Jeff Burton told me he had never run that bad in his life. Well, better this week, Dick Bergman. And we're listening to Jeff Burton and Frank Stoddard have conversation back and forth, and it is most entertaining. A few laps ago, Frank Stoddard wanted him to go in deeper into the corners. Burton came back on the radio and said, if I try to drive this car any deeper, I'm going to land somewhere in Ann Arbor. They were <laughs> silenced for a couple of laps. Then, as Burton started to close in a little bit on Johnny Benson, Stoddard got on the radio and said, go after him like a dog, trying to get a doggy bone. Well, it didn't 
work out. And a few laps after that, Frank Stoddard kind of gave up. Got on the radio, said, I know the track is getting tighter. Maybe we should have done more. Driver and crew chief. Well, we'll have a couple more chances. There's where the Roush cars are today. Kirk Bush went out of the race on lap 16. Got loose off turn two and cut it back into the wall. Burton in sixth, Martin in 12th, Kenseth 19th. You know, the beautiful thing about a relationship, and Larry knows this, he's had it with Davey Allison and some others, and I've had it with Jeff, It's when you have that, that kind of relationship where you go at each other, you pick at each other, he gets on you, you get on him, but at the end of the day, you're both out there trying to accomplish the same goal. But the first thing you accomplish as a driver and a crew chief, you've got to be good friends. You've got to be friends first. You've got to know what each other's thinking. You've got to look in them eyes, and they'll tell you where to go with it. And take good notes. Welcome back to Michigan International Speedway. Friday, we vacation in Pocono as NASCAR Winston Cup qualifying can be seen on Fox Sports Net. 2.30 Eastern, I guess your weekend going. Saturday, the ARCA race on the net and then the final Winston Cup practice on FX. The Bush Series back in action in Kentucky. Tune in for that. Under the lights, 7.30 Eastern. That's on FX. And on Sunday, NASCAR this morning on Fox Sports Net. Wrapped around with NASCAR Victory Lane and the Winston Cup Series race from Pocono on Fox, the mothership with the pre-race show at 12.30 Eastern time. Jeff Gordon leading Sterling Marlin as we look in uh, 115 out of uh, 200 laps. And as we think about the dominance of Jeff Hammond of uh, Jeff Gordon in Delaware last week, how do you relate that to what he's doing here? Well, if I was one of the competitors, I'd be scared to death because any time you allow Jeff Gordon and Hendrick Motorsports to get on a roll, to get this kind of momentum going, it can be real ugly because he has the type of talent and backing that he can do this for the next three, four, or five weeks in a row. So somebody needs to get up there, challenge him, and make sure they can't keep this momentum sustained. It's worth pointing out, two victories after 13 uh, races uh, when he won uh, an amazing 13 races in 98. After 13 races in that season, he had only three wins. So if he keeps up this pace, he certainly could be dominant. And one more win here would give Hendrick Motorsports, Rick Hendrick, his 100th career victory. Yeah, and, and while you're touching on that right there, uh, Chris, let's say one more time that uh, our wishes here at Fox Sports go out to uh, Papa Joe Hendrick. Had an opportunity to work uh, with Rick Hendrick, Hendrick Motorsports, and got a chance to know Papa Joe very well. And as Darrell was talking about earlier, everybody in the garage loves Papa Joe. We're praying for you, Papa. Get well, buddy. Let's go back upstairs to Mike. And let's bring you up to speed uh, where Ricky Craven is not. Craven is off the pace. He's dropped down and he will go a lap down to Jeff Gordon and Sterling Marlin. We've run 117 of 200 laps. Five cautions so far. The first for Jimmy Spencer at lap two. Kurt Busch crashed. Rusty Wallace crashed after contact with Todd Bodine, who then brought out his own caution. And then Elliot Sadler. Jeff Gordon has now led 99 laps. 11 for Johnny Benson, 4 for Earnhardt Jr. Rudd, Marlin, and Buckshot Jones have also led this race. But Gordon has put in another dominant performance so far. And he gives a lot of credit to the motor department over at Hendricks. He says that those guys, uh, he got beat at California when Rusty was just beating him down the straightaway like a drum. He said that uh, his guys didn't like it, went home and worked on the motor. But you know, in 16 races, he's only finished out of the top 15 one time. That's wow. quite a record. Yes, it is. Here are your top 10 cars cycling through with Gordon and Marlin in very close contact. And the rest of the field kind of struggling to keep up. Sterling Marlin has now led 12 of the 14 races this season. After going a lap down, Ricky Craven in the 32 car, he's on pit road with the hood up. Yeah, he obviously got an engine problem of some kind. Different lines for the two leaders. Now they're about 1.3 seconds ahead of Ricky Rudd. Now this is where the crew, the spotter probably told Sterling, try that high line because there's some cars making good time in three and four right up against the outside retaining wall. Dale Earnhardt Jr., he's the fourth place car, 2.2 seconds off the lead. But he has them in sight. Back behind him, Johnny Benson in fifth place, slid to eighth last week in the points, trying to climb back up. And here's Kevin Harvick in sixth. And he has one of the fastest race cars on the racetrack. He's keeping tempo with that leader, Jeff Gordon. Seventh and eighth are Burton and Jarrett as Marlin looks for the lead. Oh, he, he's, he's moved the car around a little bit down here in three and four, and he's found a little something, I believe. He's really closed right up on the back bumper. 
of the 24 car. Steve, what are they saying down there? Well, DW, it's funny you mentioned that. Sterling just radioed in to Lee McCall and Tony Glover and said that he was a little bit tight off the corner. And they did make that suggestion to move the car around a little bit. Told him just remain focused on the job at hand. Jeff Gordon, the pole winner. Now, the pole winner has not won a Winston Cup race since Tony Stewart at Martinsville last fall, 20 races ago. A new sheriff in town, Sterling Marlin, drove underneath Jeff Gordon to take the lead. Let's show you how. And here he goes. He gets a good run down low. Jeff just moved up high trying something, I believe. And let me, oh, Stern said, let me in, let me in, please let me in. Ah, whoopee. Made it. So Marlin, whose car's been good on a long run, we're coming close to pit stops now. Everybody was on pit road at lap 181 or lap 81 when the last caution was out. And we were at lap 125, somewhere around lap 30. They'll be on pit road. Pretty good little mix here, guys. Got a Dodge leading, got a Chevrolet running second, got a Ford running third. Where's that Pontiac at? Not sure whose radio that was, but one of those cars is coming in in two laps. That's about right. It was Jeff Gordon. That's about right. Yep. I tell you, that's going to be that's going to hurt Jeff because that they they're making big power. They're making a lot of steam under the hood, but they burn a lot of fuel. And all these green flag stops coming up should be four tires, making sure that car is full of fuel. That'll get you to about 20 laps to go at the end. But the good news for Gordon is. 14 and a half second pit stop. That's going to be hard to deal with. But green flag stop at Michigan, 55 miles an hour on pit road. It's got to be a good stop. No mistakes. No tires rolling away. All the lug nuts tied. And it's begun. Earnhardt Jr. and Terry Labonte are both on pit road. Pressures are on the crews right here to have good solid stops. Here comes Jr. down pit road, and the leader is just off down the back, about middle of the straightaway. Back. Dale Earnhardt Jr. about five pits away, 55 miles per hour, the pit road speed today. Jr. was loose on the previous run. Tony Urey Jr., the front tire changer and car chief on this eight car, told me they over-adjusted. They pushed the car to the tight side. They're going to bring the car back to neutral as they come around, packing that car with fuel. Gordon Jeff is Gordon's in. on pit road. The eight car ran out of fuel. Gordon, Benson, and Harvick on pit road. They haven't even put tires on the A car. They're just putting fuel in it, but he ran out and he, he, he killed the engine right there. They push him through Jeff Gordon's pit. Here comes Gordon, and those crewmen have to scatter. Dick Bergren. Jeff Gordon had just come on the radio a little bit before this pit stop and said that he was having to run incredibly hard to stay in front of the 40 car. He did not do that. Just couldn't stay out there. So they're going to take four tires, put one round to the right rear on this race car. A terrific over the wall crew. Gordon gone at just a little over 15. Steve. And Harvick on pit road in the 29. Harvick. Ron Otto, Mike Kluka changing tires. No chassis adjustments. He stole the car out on pit road. They're trying to get it pushed and refired. Kevin Harvick cannot get going. Still cannot fire. Finally gets the 29 down pit road. Jeff Green is away. Steve Park gets four tires. So does Kyle Petty and John Andretti. Bill Elliott's in. Kenny Schrader, Ward Burton, Jeremy Mayfield all on pit road. Tony Stewart, Jimmy Spencer. The 40 and the 28 are still out there. So those guys are stretching this fuel a little further than what Gordon can. That could be important. Mike Skinner in as well. So here comes Michael the 28 Walker in. And Casey Atwood. And Gordo's right here behind him trying to catch back up to get on the lead lap in case there'd be a caution right now. Steve. Hey, DW, Bill Elliott's in. Right side tires already on. Left side tires. No chassis adjustments for Bill Elliott's Dodge to Matt. Ricky Red's on pit road. As the 12 car, Jeremy Mayfield pulls out. Russ having a little bit of trouble getting into a stall. And 26 car pulls away as well as the Havilland guys go to work on Ricky Rudd's car. Michael McSwain, back back to crew chief. They were debating whether to go two or four. Bobby Burrell comes around to the left front. This will be a four tire stop. A slight air pressure adjustment for the 28 car. Ricky Rudd, he is down and away. The great stop for 28, but Manny had all kind of problems getting into his pit box. Sterling Marlin, our leader, the 40 car, the course car, he's on pit road. Watch this, Larry. I mean, the 20, here's the 12. He gets in his way. He's got to check up. Look, he locked the right front up. Now here comes the 26. Oh, man, he was having all kinds of problems. All trouble. kinds of problems. Look at the jack man. It made him. 
the 26 kept him a little on the shy side. And it just throws that whole crew's tempo off. They made a great stop, a good comeback. Sterling Marlin is in. Steve is there. Mike, they do a tearaway off the windshield to get better vision. They are going to make a wedge adjustment. Sterling saying the car is just a little bit tight off. Right side tires already on. Rick reeling the Jackman. 88 also in. They make the chassis adjustment, and Sterling Marlin is done on pit road. Shauna Robinson in, Buckshot Jones, Bobby Labonte, and Steve Park has come back in for a stop-and-go penalty and is now sent out. Boy, Marlin must have had, he must have had a terrible pit stop. He couldn't have been very good because the 24 and the 28 have already blown by him, and he's just coming up to speed. And, and remember, the 24 car, Jeff Gordon, those guys were on pit road first, got a little advantage with those fresh tires. And the leader of this race becomes Matt Kenseth. Kenseth, who's not much been in the picture all day, trying to stretch his fuel mileage. And we've talked in recent weeks about how the Jack Roush teams have increased their fuel mileage program. Speaking of Roush, his teammate, Mark Martin, in the Fizor car, he comes with the pinch to his crew. Four tires here on lap 132. And Sterling lost about, mm, about a half of a straightaway to the 24 car on that pit exchange. Like a little bit of trouble on the left side. 18 seconds. He's away. And pit road is clear, but for Bobby Hamilton Jr. Subbing for Joe Nemechek in the Andy Petrie car. And the word is that uh, Nemechek may not be back until Daytona. Uh, Fourth of July holiday weekend. Jim Hammond? Yeah, Mike. Uh, the one thing I'm noticing now, the guys that are stretching the fuel, in my mind, what they're trying to do is get it down to where if this thing stays green and they do have to come down for that last splash of gas, they can go with just one can and possibly just put two tires on the car to get it the rest of the way home. The guys that got to stop a little sooner would have to go for that second can, which could take them a little longer and make a difference here at the end of the race. That's exactly right, Jeff, because, again, if you get to that 175 lap mark with 25 to go, anything after that would be just one can. Jason Leffler is the last car to stop in this green flag pit sequence after having his career best finish last week. He would have led a lap. But his pit stall was before the start finish line. So he stopped, got a service, and now green flag stops complete. Kevin Harvick's crew reacts to the car stalling on pit road. Welcome back to Michigan. Yeah. Uh, Jason Leffler was the next to last driver to stop. Matt Kenseth is still out there. He continues to lead this race. He has not been on pit road in forever. I'm, I'm smoking the pin here. He was on pit road at lap 81. That's 119 laps to go. We're at lap 137. If he runs it to 139, that's a telltale he can do it on one more stop. He's going to do it. I guarantee you that. Problem is, he's a second half slower than second place Jeff Gordon. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah, it depends on, you know, if he's track position is going to mean everything. But he has the, uh, he has the car to do it with to make it on one more stop. Now, Jeff Gordon is 9.8 seconds behind Kenseth in second place. Kenseth is the only driver we're aware of who has not made a pit stop under green in this in this segment. And we're coming to lap 139. He still, he's still there on the racetrack. Let's get an update on Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s uh, running out of gas there, Matt. Mike, I spoke to Jeff Park, the gas man and fuel calculator on the 18. He said they were going to pit about half a lap later, they felt like they could go okay on fuel. Junior came on the radio and said the engine has died. I think it just blew up. That's why they were not in a hurry when he hit pit road. They decided to put some gas in it just to see if maybe it ran out of gas and it fired right up. They lost so much time, they didn't want to take any more time to put on tires. Kick. Well, Jeff Gordon has just come on the radio and said that this set of tires has made the car a little bit tighter. He has finished second in this race three times in the eight prior times he has started. His crew chief, Rami Lewis, has just come over the radio and said, Jeff, you're flying. Don't use it up. To Steve Burns. Well, Dick Sterling Marlin brought that number 40 car to pit road. In addition to a wedge adjustment, they also made an air pressure adjustment, and Sterling Marlin did not like the changes or the way it feels on that number 40 car. He's already talking about air pressure adjustments on their next pit stop. Fuel mileage, function of three things. How efficient is the engine? How much gas is in the tank, which is limited to 22 gallons? And one thing we've not talked about is how much of that 22 gallons can be picked up out of that fuel cell 
and transmitted to the engine. We just completed lap 141. That's 59 to go. That's 60 laps. Come to pit road, Matt Kenseth. There's no need in running any further. No need in stretching. But, Larry, that's a car that's getting every drop out of that fuel cell. It's got to be. Well, it's a product of so many things, and you got to plan it, as we said earlier. Could be a little different carburetor combination. Got the engine leaned way back. All kinds of things will make that thing use less fuel. But the hopes always is, yeah, the, as you said, Mike, the fuel cell holds 22 gallons. We always had hoped through big fuel line, long fuel line, we'd get another gallon. He's coming to pit road. He's listening to us, D.W. There you go. It's, yeah, no need to go any further, young man. Well, he's made it interesting, that's for sure. 59 to go. Matt Kenseth finally comes in, and he will surrender the lead to Jeff Gordon. Matt Yoakum, can he make it on one stop? Well, Larry? He's making his way into his pit stall. That's the game plan down here in the 17th pit. I talked to Robbie Reiser. They feel like as Matt throws out the water bottle, they are going to make a chassis adjustment. They feel like they are good to go on fuel. Still trying to make that chassis adjustment. But Jack came down. A costly time on the watch here. Finally down and away. 19.6 seconds. I just about... I just about blew any plans he had, Larry, because he lost so much time. Yeah, we'll have to see when he gets back up to speed as here comes Jeff Gordon off turn four. The Jack He's their man. leader of the race. The Jack man was just jacking that thing. Jack, 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 Jack had a Jack problem on the left side. Yeah, Daryl, he slipped coming around the front of the car to get in position for the left side. Tough break. Jeff? Mike, what you said was exactly what happened. When Jeff came around the car, he happens to be named Jeff also. When he came around the car, it looked like he lost his foot and either stepped on the airline and down he went. And by the time he got back underneath the car, he didn't get the handle tight enough. And it happens from time to time with Jack Man. And he couldn't get the car up off the ground, which really hurt the left side tire change. Jeff Gordon is back in command. He's led 104 laps today of the 143. But with all the different strategies in play, folks, this is far from over. We'll be right back to Michigan in a moment. This is NASCAR on FX. Welcome back to Michigan, where the weather has changed, and for the better, that dark cloud system that was coming toward the racetrack veered away, and there's sun on the racetrack. Oh, it's a bright, sunshiny day. Good day for a race at Michigan. 54 laps to go. Jeff Gordon back out in front, and pit stops, and the pit sequence. Part of the reason well, why. Well, Sterling Marlin came in leading the race. He had just passed Jeff Gordon before pit stops, and something bad had to happen to Sterling Marlin to lose so much time, and I think... If you look at what uh, Larry is circling, is circling there, ins and outs. Look at Ricky Rudd there. What a difference that made. That's the reason he's in second place right now. That's the number of seconds from the start-finish line around, into the pits, out of the pits, and back to start-finish. And remember, Harvick, the reason his time was so slow, stalling it on pit road, his crew having to push him made a big difference. There's a look at Kevin Harvick, who's presently in seventh place and alone on the racetrack, about a second and a half behind Bill Elliott. But he fared a lot better than other people did that had problems on pit road. Dale Jr. has gone a lap down, and uh, some other guys, like Kenseth, is now a lap down. Well, Matt Kenseth gambled. Let's go to his pit. And Robbie Reiser is talking to Matt on the radio right now, giving him lap times. They had a 19-second change pit stop. Robbie, are you good to go the distance? We're going to go the distance. They're only chance of winning, so that's the way we're going to go here. You were calculating the mileage with Jack Rush, the owner. How close are you going to be? We're right there. We're right at the end. They're going to roll the dice, Mike. They are expecting that every other car will have to make one more pit stop, and they will not. I believe that was a, a really great strategy, but that long pit stop, that track position, that's going to hurt him. And, of course, the other thing that's going to hurt him is if a caution comes out because he's a lap down right now in 27th position, and, uh, you know, he's running about a tenth off the leader, but the big difference is going to be a lap down or if that caution comes out. The, you're not going to beat Jeff Gordon in that crowd until you can do everything right. He's got an awesome race car. He's an awesome race car driver, and they're doing everything right in the pits. He is on a roll, guys. He's up on that wheel, and when he gets up there like that, look out. Bobby Labonte's worked his way back up toward the front after uh, problems early. He's up to 12th place. Yeah, he's, he goes been, past Blaney. he's been steadily coming forward, Mike. Uh, I've been watching him, and uh, he's been passing a lot of cars. You know, he spun over there off of two, and by golly, he's back in the hunt. you got to give credit to his team. The old front valence, the bottom part of the front end all turned under. They kept coming to pit road, fixing that. So you got to give a big credit to those guys as well. Jimmy Maycard is one of the best. 
it's hard to believe that the Winston Cup champion of a year ago would be having a season that they would have to call struggling. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, they just had so many things to bite them. So many unexpected things. Engine problems, spinning out, leading the race at Charlotte. Spinning out today, I mean, just bad luck. A look at Jimmy Maycar. Looking things over from the pit box. Jeff Gordon keeps mowing him down. He's trying to put Robert Presley, the 23rd place car, a lap down. All right, we talked a few minutes ago. The sun's out. The rain is behind us. We're going to be okay here, but look at the difference. Track temperature from where we started, 108 now. But just remember, halfway, about 50 laps ago, it was down to 96 degrees. These cars are not going to grip as good. The track is as hot as it's been the entire event. And Rudd is closing ever so slightly. I guess that's probably the best car on the track right now, Ricky Rudd. The gap 1.7 seconds last time by Jeff Gordon to Ricky Rudd, first to second with 49 laps to go here in the Irish Hills of Michigan on FX. With 45 laps to go, Jeff Gordon leads Ricky Rudd by 1.4 seconds. Sterling Marlin is about five seconds off the lead. Johnny Benson, 10 seconds. Jeff Burton, the fifth place car, 14 seconds behind Jeff Gordon. Whatever they did to Sterling's car, if it was an air pressure adjustment, boo, I bet they wish they hadn't have done that. Yeah, he's over three tenths slower than the leader right now, Jeff Gordon. Look at where our Koch family of drivers sit in the point standings coming into Michigan here. Ricky Rudd, sixth in the point, second in this race. Among them. Kyle Petty making the show, third, running 30th right now in this race. Trying to climb his way back up into the point standings. Guess who that is ahead of Tony Stewart right there? Uh, that would be the leader. Yes, that's flames coming off the back of that bad boy. And Stewart, the 22nd place car, goes a lap down, ran up among the leaders, made a great charge from his provisional starting spot, but now has slid to 22nd and he's the first car one lap down. I believe these changing weather conditions Larry uh, is, is having a lot to do with some of these cars kind of backing up and that's something Jeff Gordon Robbie Loomis that group has always done a great job at is adjusting to the track conditions and I, I really think that's a product of Jeff Gordon being able to communicate well with his crew about what he needs in his car. Tag with him you know what to do the best you can baby. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has come on to pit road. Now remember, they got gas only when they Earnhardt Jr. thought he might have blown up the engine. They gassed it. They did not give him tires, and now those tires have had enough. And, and he was going to have to make one more stop. I'm sure this is one when he wanted to make it, but he this will be good for the end of the race now. With 43 laps to go. But Michael Waltrip in that Napa car, Michael in 21st position, finally going to lap down here at lap 158. Yeah, these long greens with, with pit stops really shakes up the running order. Okay, uh, the word has come from the high command. New rule for the Fox pool. And folks, there's no money involved. We only have two Insta Cup races left on Fox. Nobody's allowed to pick Gordon. Okay, that's a deal. After today. Not even Hammond. Not, it, right. no, not no. even Hammond. No, right. But Daryl and I is going to have a secret okay. meeting. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> I think everybody would pick him at Sears Point. <laughs> hey, Daryl, I'll ask you one of the questions since we're making these rules up. What happened to the eight car? I thought you picked him just a minute ago. We're going to give you an ERI rule on that deal. Uh, did I say eight? Well, I thought you said 20. No, you, did you say 28? I thought I said 28. Okay, I that's why. Now, oh. now you want to get on my bandwagon. Uh -huh. hey, I don't ever want to be on your Why bandwagon? would I say eight? I forgive me a break. Rack the tape and let's check that. 41 laps to go at Michigan. This is NASCAR on FX. 38 laps to go. Can Ricky Rudd catch Jeff Gordon? That's likely what Robert Yates and Rudd's crew chief Michael McSwain are talking about. Ever since Fatback got those sunglasses, they've been running a lot better. Well, at least they've been looking a lot better anyway. <laughs> Rudd is a second and a half back from Jeff Gordon. My, no. Dick Bergeron. With Robbie Loomis, his crew chief. Robbie, when will you pit and what will you do? Well, first of all, I'd like to say hello to Papa Joe Hendrick back home. Our thoughts are with him and his family. We're probably looking around 176, something like that. Okay, let's go to Maddie. And Robert Yasa Turner and Michael Fatback McSwain have been crunching numbers. Fatback. 
Jack, when are you going to make your last stop? And will you take tires or just gas and go? Uh, we're going to try to play this thing all the way to the end as long as we can. Somewhere between 175 and 185. We're going to pit. And what we're going to do, two tires, four tires, six tires, I don't know. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. The last time this 28 car went to Victory Lane was right here at Michigan. Now let's go to Steve Burns. All right, Matt, with Lee McCall, crew chief on the number 40 for Sterling Marlin. Lee, tell us about your strategy as we get to the close of the race. Well, right now, we're just going to see what the 24 car does. Um, you know, the Coors Light Dodge been running great all day. We're just a tick tight right now. So uh, we get, get down toward the end of the run. We'll see uh, what kind of adjustments we need to make. Dale Jarrett, the 88 car, the UPS car, he's on pit road. 36, Kenny Schrader, he's on pit road. Also, Terry Labonte, Brett Bodine, and Johnny Benson have been to pit road. Those uh, pit reports were very informative, weren't they? <laughs> Did we learn anything? Yeah, we're going to come in and we're going to do something. We're just not sure what. I love it. And we you don't know, expect these to be these guys' last pit stop. Schrader's had a, a really strong day. He has. He's been running well. He's gone a lap down now, but first half of this race, he was right in contention. Mark Martin went a lap down there, too, while we were flipping around. Kyle Petty is in. But you know, Daryl, these guys are going to have to pit with 20 or 25 to go. They're going to have to have almost one can of fuel. That's seven, eight seconds. These crews, they can change at least two right side tires. They're almost like free. Yeah, I, I'd go for two right side tires, can of fuel, and get out of here. Show me the money. Tony Stewart in. He's lapped down, drops it down a gear, and comes to a halt. Kevin LePage in the four car. He's on pit road as well. Now, all these are pretty much lap down cars with the exception of, of Jarrett there, so it may not influence the leaders to come in a little earlier than planned. 34 laps to go. Can Matt Kenseth make it on fuel? Stick around. And next, welcome you back to Michigan, and you see Jeff Gordon on the lead. Ricky Rudd, Sterling Marlin looking for their first wins of the year in chasing Gordon. The great views you're seeing of this action being brought to you, us today by Monster.com's East Coast blimp, Trump. Speaking of Trump, Gordon has been the money driver he's led since lap 142 and last pitted on lap 128. Remember in the first 40 miles, we had four cautions, but things have settled down. Let's get out of Steve Burns. And Chris, the 29 of Kevin Harvick on pit road. They're not going to make any chassis adjustments. Just four tires and enough gas to get to the end of this race. Mike Kluke on the front. Ron Otto on the rear tires. The 30 of Jeff Green also on pit road. His teammate, Kevin Harvick, is away. Larry, I was a little surprised they came in this early because the last three or four laps, Harvick's been the fastest car on the racetrack. He had been the fastest car by about two tenths. All I can think of, they was making that much gains trying to get advantage of those fresh tires. Dick Bergman, what is their thinking? Well, Johnny Benson came in a bit early here just a little while ago, and the problem was he wasn't sure what the problem was. At first, he thought the engine was blowing up. Then he thought he had a flat tire. The real problem, a wheel weight was off. He had a vibration and pitted for that. To that. And an update on the 88 car, Dale Jarrett. He short pitted about 15 laps earlier than normal. He came on the radio and said, Todd, I just feel like I'm going to wreck. The car is so loose. So they pitted on lap 165, made a wedge adjustment. Also, an update on his teammate, Trouble. Ricky Turn Rudd. one. Turn one, guys. Big smoker, and that's Earnhardt Jr. He had just ripped off a couple of laps that were as quick as what Harvick was turning, but he has now brought out the caution flag. Now, Rusty Wallace and Bill Elliott caught on pit road as the caution comes out. They and make it out without losing a lap. Yeah. Elliott's okay. Here's the leader just now coming down to take the caution flag. He'll stay on, he'll yeah. stay on the, go back on the racetrack. Yeah, so he, he'll stay on the lead lap. He's good to go. But guys, Matt Kent's a strategy. Out the window. History. History. Not a good strategy. And Kenny Schrader, Johnny Benson, Dale Earnhardt, all these cars that just stopped will now probably be trapped by the caution flag a lap down. We have 11 yep. cars showing on the lead lap right now. Yep. Ooh. Now we're going to rack them up. Got all these fast cars on the inside on the restart. Yeah, Harvick Green, Bobby Labonte, and, and the Mike Skinner, and the drivers I just mentioned just all find themselves a lap down because they pitted just prior to this caution. Dick Bergren. Well, Jeff Gordon's going to take four tires on this stop. They're going to go up one half pound on the right rear tire. Matt. 
Well, Dick, down here in the 28 pit, Michael Fabak and Swain and Ricky Rudder talking about what to do to the 28 car. He says the car is a little loose at the beginning of the run, but it dials in very good to Steve. Well, Matt Sterling, Marlon, in that 40, they're going to make a wedge adjustment, air pressure. Sterling said it's a little bit too tight, especially coming off turn four. 11 cars on the lead lap. Jeff Gordon, Ricky Rudd, Sterling Marlin, Jeff Burton, Ward Burton, Dave Blaney, both the Bill Davis cars up there. Hut Strickland on the lead lap. Bill Elliott, Jeremy Mayfield, Jimmy Spencer, and Ryan Newman. Staying out, paid off these guys. DW, really what I'm did. doing is that crew chief. I'm picking your brain now. Don't tell me what it does <laughs> at the end of 50 laps. I need to know what it did for 20 laps because that's what kind of a shootout we're going to have. And, and see, this is why I never like this, to pit early. Stay out there until you got to come on pit road. Because every time you pit early trying to get some advantage, this is what happens to you. Now, these guys that did pit, they will stay out. That'll put them probably on the tail end of the lead lap, but they're going to have to have a caution to make that ground back up. Yeah, more work for these leaders. Gordon, Rudd, Marlin, top to bottom. Matt? Ricky Rudd is the first car to hit. They're going to work on the right side tires. The laps are up on the wall. Let's see if they do a four-tire stop to Dick. Uh, Jeff Gordon a little bit slow so far. Chris Anderson just coming around the car with a jack. Brewster Craven, the man with the gas in the back. To Steve, he's gone. Left side tires going on the 40 of Sterling Marlin. One pound out of the left rear. They've already taken one pound to fight out. 15.3 seconds for Sterling Marlin's crew. Ricky Rudd beats Jeff Gordon to the end of pit road because two, two tires. <laughs> <laughs> and I get it in stereo from two announcers two tires now remember Dale Earnhardt lost an engine at the end of the practice session Careful. yesterday that's probably Everybody totally unrelated something, something, something's wrong something's wrong he just told everybody to calm down I don't know something's but going on right. like 11 cars there on the lead lap car gonna be or you want to free it up a little bit for traffic there what he said you want to free the car up a little bit to run in traffic here next time coming in Four, do a half uh, round on that track bar. Now, knowing he's going to have to restart in the back. Temperature being been there, bud. It's at 235 right now. Ten four, make sure to turn that engine fan on. Ten four, it's on. Uh, it's been run about 210. So if he comes back in, they want to know if he wants yep, the car to handle nice differently guys, because like now, instead of being out front, he'd have to deal with traffic. Something he hadn't had to do a lot today. No. He's questioning about everything here. This is a good time to make any of those adjustments they didn't talk about or make. You heard him asking about the temperatures. The radiator has an electric fan on it. Ricky Rudd's back, back in, in as well in the 28 car. Well, they took two tires. Are they going to get two more? I believe since, since they know Gordon had to come back in, they thought maybe they would come back in. He's the guy they got to beat. And this is the wrench. They're going to, you heard him talk about down. adjusting Walk track down, bar. Back. They're going to raise Walk the down. track bar. Our look for right over here, right over here. Should get them all on there. Plenty of time. So they had lug nuts off. Dick Bergman. Yep, that was it. The problem was lug nuts on the left front five, tire. You nailed it exactly. Might have cost him the race. Well, Ricky Rudd got his left side tires, and he's back out. Well, I believe that's a that's a product of, well, if Gordon's in trouble, got to come in, restart at the back. I'm going to start back there with him. But now he's behind Jeff Gordon. A while ago, he was in front of Jeff Gordon. And it puts one of those Dodge boys out front, Sterling Marlin. Hmm. Hmm. That's how you make you say hmm. They've just waved the green flag to restart this race. Ooh, we're not glad we got back what we did, folks, because this ought to be good. Johnny Benson on the tail end of the lead lap is out front. Look at him scatter in turn two. Look at that. Everybody's everywhere. Look like a covey of quails over there off the two. Everybody trying to get their lap back. Sterling Martin, our leader, he's back there in about 18th position on the racetrack, but he's leading the race in the 40 car. All of those cars that made pit stops under green pulled up behind the pace car when the cars that had not hit it under caution so the race leader is deep in that i don't i don't even see him <laughs> i don't know where he is there he is down on the inside right there going by here's marlin right there right in the middle of that pack but now, oh. that is a second place car that 99 car jeff burton right beside him there following tony strip through that would be a battle for the lead but sterling's car is really good the longer they run he and needs the, to step it up if he's going to hold these guys off. And the two Bill Davis cars right with them. Blaney and Ward Burton having a great day right with the leaders. And we got four Dodgers in the top five. Bill Elliott's right there, too. 
We're at the Motor City. What does that tell you? Huh? Tells me I'm not moving from my TV set. <laughs> well, here's a guy that's moving, Dave Blaney, in a 93 car beside Jeff Burton. This is a battle for second right here behind our leader, Sterling Marlin. Well, they're, all of a sudden, after that caution, there's a lot of guys that know they got a shot at winning this thing when Gordon had trouble. All right, leaders working their way through traffic. Let's go to the garage and Matt. Dale Earnhardt Jr. had a top three car most of the day, and then he ran out of gas, and that just started your problems today, DJ. Yeah, we ran out of gas. I figured, guess we figured a mile was wrong or something. Uh, and burn a piston. We burned a piston in practice, and thought we knew why, and I guess not. So, uh, go home, figure it out, man. Uh, just gonna take a hit in the points, and we really didn't need it. We was kind of trying to move up and trying to be consistent. And, uh, we'll just kind of try to keep going, man. Earnhardt Jr. came in here ninth in the Winston Cup standings. And man, don't that break your heart. I mean, just so yeah. disappointed, his, so dejected. His older brother won here yesterday in the ARCA race. Yes, he did. I know he burned a piston yesterday, but sometimes running out of fuel. Oh, yeah. yeah. Starved uh -huh. that thing, cooling that fuel, that can burn a piston as well. Yeah, you see that happen peri periodically. There's our leader just going by. He's still in mid-pack. Yeah, and he is, and, and the thing is, that Jeff Gordon's loving every bit of this because he is closing in a hurry. There's Gordon underneath Ryan Newman and Hutt Strickland. This is all for position. Those are all lead lap cars, and there's Ricky Rudd right with him. Of course, our two fastest cars, Ricky Rudd in the 28, Jeff Gordon in the 24. Here you see our interval behind the leader, 1.3 seconds. See how Rudd pulled him down the straightaway? Gordon came off on the bottom of four, but he had to fade up in behind the 28 car. Look how much distance, though, Jeff Gordon's l losing this. Back to one and a half seconds. He's back there in traffic. He's been in clean air all day. He's not had to deal with traffic. 1.6 seconds off turn two. If Sterling Marlin can get himself a little lead, get out, of, get out of this traffic and get out front, he might be able to hold these guys off. And we've lost the fourth place car. Ward Burton has dropped down to the apron, way off the pace. Oh, what a play. Gosh. And we were just talking about Bill Davis and all, and both his cars in the top five. And still a lot of, Bill Elliott is running third right now. And Blaney is right up there to challenge. Back from and Elliott. Sterling has worked his way out of this uh, mad rush back here. And now Gordon's in the middle of it. But boy, he just went by Ricky Rudd in the 99 car on the bottom of the racetrack. Dave, oh boy, John Andretti just got all squirreled up right and, there. And look what that did for Gordon. Open the door and here come the leaders. Dave Blaney is second. Hutt Strickland is third. What wow. A great run for those guys. Jeff Burton fourth, Ricky Rudd fifth. And they're back to battling four wide again. Four abreast. Here they come. Somebody told them there's 17 laps to go, boys. We need to go. Man. Boy, look at that. They're all over the place down the front stretch. And you could have a fast car and never know it. Two of the Penske cars battling the 12 of Mayfield, the 02 of Newman for fifth place. Fifth spot, Jeff Burton in the 99 on the high side. And again, there you see Hutch Strickland in that 90 car. These are all lead lap cars and Bill Elliott in the nine car. What a difference a pit stop and a caution flag will make. Wow. Changes the whole complexity. Now Sterling Marlins 1.7 seconds ahead of Blaney, who is three tenths ahead of Gordon. And Gordon is trapped behind the... Uh, 93 and this 31 right here. He can't get out behind him at this. Right, here he goes to the bottom. He's headed to the bottom. He's going to pass them both going into turn one. And that puts Jeff Gordon up into second place. Now Ricky Rudd's trying to follow him up through Matt. Well, the reason why Ricky Rudd came back down pit road, I talked to the crew. They said last year. They took on two tires, and Rusty Wallace beat them with four. So they decided with the caution to come back in and get left side tires. And this is the same car that he had here, had such a lead till that caution came out and Rusty burned him by changing four tires. Boy, Sterling is hung beside the 36 car, Kenny Schrader. He needs to get around him in a hurry because these guys are coming. Ricky Rudd on the bottom side here lost a lot of momentum. You see by the Fox tracks, 2.6 seconds behind our leader. Well, the 31 car held him to the bottom going into the corner and it took away his momentum. Got to slide up in front of him. Still there. 2.6 seconds, 14 laps to go. Gordon needs to run two tenths faster than Marlin to catch him, but then he's got to pass him. And in the last lap, he was a tenth and a half quicker than but Marlin. That's Marlin, not Marlin's been stuck beside the 36 car. He just cleared him going into three. He's got clean air in front of him. He should be able to really pull away now. 
Gordon stuck beside the 30 car. That's going to hold him up a little bit, but he's been awfully strong getting into turn one. Jeff Gordon was four tenths quicker that lap than mm. Sterling Marlin, but as you said, Sterling's been monkeying with the traffic up there. Now Jeff Gordon's going to have a clear racetrack for a little bit. Now, if Marlin can just get up there where he can get a little whiff of a draft off Bobby Labonte, maybe he can hang on to this lead. It's, it's going to be a nail biter. It's going to be right down to the wire. 13 to go. Gordon is coming, and you got to admit, guys, from 11th place on the restart and all that traffic, Gordon is almost there. Now, there's Bobby Labonte. There's Marlin, so Marlin can get a little drafting help off Labonte right now. Oh, he's in good shape right now. He's cleared all the cars that he needed to. Question now is, does he have the speed to hold Mar uh, to her, hold Gordon off? Now, that time, Sterling Marlin was about a tenth quicker than Jeff Gordon. And that's what he needs. Twelve laps to go. Sterling Marlin has run 31 races here at Michigan. He has two... Oh, trouble down here in turn two, guys. One car way sideways and around and up in the wall. Is that Andretti? Yeah, the 77 car just booted him down there in the middle of the corner and turned him around, and there's cars spinning everywhere. And there's Presley, who was spun down to the bottom of the racetrack, and Sterling did not need this. The caution nope. is on the speedway. We're going to have a lot of cars that's going to get their lap back. Johnny Benson, Kevin Harvick, Matt Kenseth, Bobby Labonte all get their lap back. Schrader's going to try. Yep. I think he got I it. I believe he did get it. He Schrader did get got it back. It. So we had five or six cars that got their lap back. So now we have 15, 16 cars on the lead lap, and we're going to have a, under a 10-lap shootout. Well, that's too bad down there. The 77 car booted the 43 in the rear right in the middle of one and two down there and turned him around. I don't think that's the first time this season those two have gotten together. Well, then that tells me that ain't the last. A guy, Sterling Marlin, did not want to see this caution. No. We're going to be under 10 laps. It will be a down finger restart. No lap traffic to deal with. He'll start this race with Jeff Gordon right on his rear bumper. That is pure speed, and who's got the fastest race car? They've been pretty equally matched, the two have. I'm pretty sure we will not see Sterling Marlin, Jeff Gordon, Ricky Rudd on pit road for any kind of service. Ooh, we probably. ran 11 laps. We may see some of those cars that made a lap up get back on uh, pit road to get four tires yeah the, there's there's the contact and the, the 40 the 77 booted the 43 back up before i think we picked this up but look at this mess moves. coming at him right there whoa. wow casey whoa, atwood whoa, casey. had to change directions four times wow what a save let's get michael waltrip's view here we go down now watch casey especially on the right there if you see him where am i going to go where am i going to go where's he going to go Place he ended up behind Michael. My gosh. Hard to get through there. Jeff Burton in the 99, Bill Elliott in the 9, Jimmy oh. Spencer in the 26, all the cars that made the lap up. Johnny Benson, Kevin Harvick, Matt Kenseth, Bobby Labonte, all coming to pit road. But Jeff Burton and Bill Elliott, they were backsliding. They might as well come to pit oh, yeah. road, try to make that car better. Hey, Elliott was third at one time, there, but uh, he was coming in in ninth place. Dick Bergeron. Jeff Burton in, they're going to take a pound out of the right rear, move the track bar down to try to adjust this car. Four tire change on this thing. They're going to put four good ones on it to try to get some speed out of it to Steve. Dick, four tires for Bill Elliott, no chassis adjustments, left side tires going on. They have a problem on the left front, but Bill Elliott is finally away. Kevin Harvick also in. Left side tires going on for Harvick, and he's away right next to Johnny Benson and Matt Kenson. Benson beat that duo off pit road, and Bobby Labonte leaves, and that will set us up for the shootout. Ten laps to go here at Michigan International Speedway in the Kmart 400 on FX. Welcome back to Michigan International Speedway here in Brooklyn, Michigan on FX. We just have nine laps to go. Sterling Marlin leading Jeff Gordon with Ricky Rudd right behind. And when there was that situation, Jeff Hamlin, when Gordon had to go back into the pits, you questioned why Rudd went along with him. Now they look like they're in pretty good shape. Right now it's working out pretty good for these guys. But the guy I'm looking at right now and pulling for is old Sterling Marlin. He's got that Dodge up front. And if he can just hold them off, but I'm telling you, it's going to be tough with Gordon behind me. Yeah, the way Jeff Gordon is going, it's been 24 years since a Dodge has won here. Mike? Last Winston Cup win for Dodge anywhere was uh, November 77, Neil Bonnet on Ontario. And we've had some nail biters here, DW. Oh, yeah, I never will forget that one. I was just starting to get into my stride there in 1978, and I was working on the old Pearson. I thought I had him set up. I thought I had him beat. And the old fox slid right by me going into turn three and won the race. 
And I won't forget that 1991 with uh, Dale Jarrett. Got us on the last corner of the last lap in that Wood Brothers car when I was with Davey Allison. And you know what? We're getting ready to see somebody else's name is getting ready to go on that statistic list. All right, let's set the restart for you. Sterling Marlin, there you see his crew, the race leader, trying to bring Dodge back to victory lane, but Jeff Gordon is now lined up right behind him. Lead lap car single file. There's the list of them, 10 of them. And now add to that list, Jimmy Spencer, Johnny Benson, Matt Kenseth, Kevin Harvick. And from here down, all of these cars stayed out. Everybody here down on the lead lap pitted. How about Blaney? Wow, hanging in there in fourth. Two Dodges in the top five. Now the lead lap cars end right there. After Bobby Labonte, everybody is a lap down, but with less than 10 laps to go, they have to line up behind the lead lap cars, single file. That's a break for Sterling. And I tell you, the biggest thing is, I've watched Gordon on every restart that we've had. He's been awfully quick up through the gears. Marlins only led twice in this race before today, 96 and 1997. He has two top fives, but has never won here. But what a great year those guys are having. Oh, it's yeah. been a little up and down. They're, on, they're the only team that has been in the top ten in points all year long since Daytona. And a look at Ray Evernham, Bill Elliott, fifth at Daytona, and his best since then, 14th. And Elliott's uh, got a shot today. He's up there in that top ten. Another Dodge in the top ten. If you're a Dodge boy, you're having a pretty good afternoon. Of course, maybe not as good as these guys here, but uh, still had a great afternoon. Fun to watch. All right, Larry, what are you going to do, buddy? What are you going to tell me? You tell got, me something. Sterling, you got to have one of the best restarts you've ever had right here. That's Marley, right. He's got to quench those flames, maybe maybe pop the top and pour a little on them. Oh, that's a good idea. That might work. Drown them out. Single file restart, seven there to go. Green Green flag. Green flag. Mayfield inside of Blaney. That's back at fourth place. Oh, well, here he goes, underneath. Uh, no contest. Ricky Rudd, that 28 car, he wants to come with him. The big thing is they're going to get side. Oh, trouble again down turn two, guys. Sean is around. The room behind the 28 if you need it. Everybody's going to get past. Caution is on the speedway, even though she's gotten it straight. They're telling him race it back to the caution. We'll get a restart here, but they're going to bring it back to the caution. The battle's going to be for second between Ricky Rudd and Sterling Marlin. And here come all those lap down cars, but none of them will get close enough. Close for second place at the line, Rudd. Rudd got it by the end. And it was close for oh, fourth. Rudd beat the fire. He beat the heck out of him. He beat him by an inch. And Blaney beat uh, Jeremy Mayfield back for fourth. I believe that's the seventh caution of the day, and it's for Sean uh, Robinson. Once we get called up, then we'll come in and get four tires. I don't think she hit anything. Uh, just find that thing around down there. Now, let me go back to the historic uh, back on women and Winston Cup racing. Back in the early days of NASCAR, about the only records that were kept were the car number, the driver's name, the number of laps completed, and the payoff. And even who they drove for, who owned the car, those records weren't kept in the early days. So a little bit of confusion how many women have competed in NASCAR Winston Cup racing, either 14 or 15 as of today. Well, she's done a good job. She stayed out of trouble uh, up until now. See if we can tell what happened here from the Briggs and Stratton on board. Yeah, I just think she was trying a little too hard. Maybe drove it off in there, and uh, around she went. May have been a little stage out there from uh, from the accident. Well, we have seen so many cars get loose on the throttle off turn two today. Car. Several accidents there, yeah, especially there. in the early part of the race. You know, she's running 34. Uh, that, you know, that's All right, we got pretty good guys. day's work. Nice pretty good effort. Pit, and she's only three laps down. On everything right. All right, looks like one to go coming here. Yeah, so, Gordon's just too strong on these restarts. I watch him every time, and he really goes. You see the flagman holding one finger down. That's, again, a down finger restart. Under 10 laps to go, single file, only lead lap cars to the front, everybody else behind them, and those guys cannot mix their position back there. If you're 20 laps down and you're in front of a car that's one lap down, you can't let him buy you. Performance of the day, as far as I'm concerned, is Hut Strickland as you watch the pit stop on Shauna Robinson. For <laughs> Junie Donnelly, Strickland's been on the lead lap all day. He's in seventh place. Seventh place. What a great run for him. And I think Felipe Lopez is, can take a lot of pride in that performance because ever since he's been over there, they have run a lot better. The last top ten for this car, August of 1999, ninth right here. 
If you look down to our left there, all that smoke you see down there, that's a little, that haze is Philippe Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably, he smoked him some cigarettes today, didn't he? <laughs> Good run for Hunt. <laughs> Jeff Gordon, the leader. Remember, the pole sitter hasn't won since uh, last fall. Tony Stewart won at Martinsville last September. Ricky Rudd right with him, Sterling Marlin, Dave Blaney. Another fellow who has not had a lot of good finishes this year, but he looks like he's going to have a great one today for Bill Davis. In fourth, Jeremy Mayfield there in fifth, ahead of uh, Penske protege Ryan Newman. Jeff? Yeah, I've been watching that Ryan Newman crew all day long, keeping up with their pit stops. Some guys have been whipping out 15-second stops, and they're really pumped, you know, as far as their driver's concerned. They've had an excellent run all day long. Again, a Roger Penske group, and Roger Penske puts emphasis on everything good pit stops included yeah he's over here to the our left as well watching with a great deal of interest can Jeff Gordon light up those flames and blast away from the field can Ricky Rudd win his first race since 1988 Rudd's gonna have to get a run on him going into one that's all he can do can right. Sterling Marlin or Dave Blaney come back and give Dodge its first Winston Cup win in 24 years let's find out four laps to go here they go Green, 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 go, go, go. Give it all you got, guys. Ricky Rudd trying to stay right with Jeff Gordon. See how Sterling falls back on the restart? That's been his Achilles heel most of the day. Ricky Rudd, 88 races ago, was his last win. Dig, Rudd, dig. Come on, get it under him. And those two have taken off from the field. It's a two-horse race. 180,000 people, everybody's standing. No needed seats in these last three or four laps. Rudd closes up at the end of the back straightaway, but I think Gordon's a little quicker through the corner. Remember how strong Rudd has been off turn two, though. Let's see if he can mount a charge. And Sterling's got his hands full right behind him with Blaney. Here they come. Three laps to go. Ready to go, bud. Ready to go. Jeremy Mayfield has climbed up into fourth place. If Rudd can get up under him and stay close to the corner, he can worry him and get him loose. That's what he'll exactly do. He's and trying to keep that nose right up under the back of that Chevrolet, and he can, he can shake him loose. That's where Rudd is strongest, turn two. Whoa, Blaney almost put a pass on Sterling. He was up beside of him, but Sterling beat him up off the corner. And Ryan Newman in fifth place is right there as well. Jeremy Mayfield just passed him for the fourth position. Ricky Rudd. It's going to have one last best chance to get Jeff Gordon. And this time they come to the line with two to go. Boy, he is there. There's no question about it. He's going to, he's going to put the pressure on Gordo, but I haven't ever seen Gordo mess up in situations like this. He's just a little bit quicker up off of the corner. Yeah, this time Gordon maintains a one car length advantage. Rudd pulls him and gets him at the end of the straightaway. Rudd's probably a tick quicker, but he's not getting through the corner quite as well off particularly. A little bit quicker. Rudd's going to go to the high side. Take it, up there. Take it up there. Loosen her up. That'll give him some outside. momentum. Looking outside. That might be his thought. Oh. All right, Ricky. Come on, buddy. One lap to go. And they're side by side oh, with the starting it. finish line. Rudd with a car length advantage. Get up in front of him. You got to get in front of him. You can't let him come back on the outside. Oh, oh. there. Rudd just stuck it in too deep at the bottom of turn one, lost the momentum. Gordon got the lead. Rudd's coming back. But that was that, that should have been Rudd's last lap move. All right, we're going to hey. see what happened. One more set of quarters down in turn three and four. Man, he was there. That would have been for the win if it was on this lap. If he can get close enough, he might have a shot to try it again. Rudd tries that high side. Well, I, I think I think Gordon knows what he's going to do this time. Though. He's going to try to make a run down the hill, Daryl, off turn four. Let's see what happens. He gets the run. Here he comes. He's going to dive to the bottom. Gordon to block. And Gordon to win. He holds off Ricky Rudd. Wow. Marlon Mayfield and at the line. Ryan Newman edges the 90 of Hut Strickland for fifth. But Hut Strickland finished sixth. What a run yeah. Ryan Newman fifth. Sorry to put you do all that work. That's 100. Jeff Craven, get that flag. That is 100 Winston Jeff Cup wins for car owner Rick Hendry. Uh, and in a very short period of time. Just like this young man right here. That's his 55th Winston Cup win in a very short, short period, period of time. time. 11 Hendrick wins for Terry Labonte. Nine for DW and for Tim Richmond driving for Rick. Jeffrey Bodine, seven. Ken Schrader and Ricky Rudd, four apiece. One for Jerry Nadu. And I might add, our points leader, Dale Jarrett, finishes 18th. It's going to be close, guys. Rick Hendrick's first win as a car owner. 
came in his eighth race, the Spring Martinsville race in 1984 with Jeff Bodine, the driver. That's racing, guys. This is some good racing. Love it. Watch this race for fifth to the line. Three wide off turn four, and Jeff Burton in that 99 following Hutch Strickland in the 90 right in the middle. The 99 is get in there and give him a little show. Oh. Oh. That's all it took to cost the 90 car fifth place. That little loss of momentum right there. But look at the difference. Just a no. Wow. Just a no. And that's after 400 miles. The 99 to 93, all those cars come across together. Well, you can hear the roar from the crowd, and you can decide which is which, love or hate. <laughs> you know, it's like next Saturday on uh, on Fox Major League Baseball when the Yankees win. A lot of folks would like to see somebody else because when the dominant team wins, well, I tell you, you got to have some good guys and you got to have some bad guys and you got to have some heroes. And that guy there is a hero. Jeff Gordon passes Lee Petty and Rusty Wallace for sole possession of seventh on the all time NASCAR win list with his 55th victory. And he sits in our NBNA winner circle. Now that was a thriller. It was. And I swear, I think Ricky Rudd, if he'd have saved that move that he put on Gordon to get the white flag, I think he, I think he made his move one lap too soon. And he should have drove right up in front of Gordon going down into one. He should have made him lift. That's his old quarterback up here, you know, coach. Matt Yoakum's there. And Jeff Gordon celebration and hugs all around. Magical win number 100 as he gets a hug from John Hendrick. Jeff Gordon reaches back and, of course, I had to get the sunglasses. Congratulations. Does it make it any more special to win it like that, Jeff? Well, so many things special about this day. Of course, it was an exciting race. Uh, my hat's off to uh, Sterling Marlin and Ricky Rudd. What a, what a great race. But uh, this was for Pop. I know you're watching, Pop. We're with you, buddy, and uh, just praying for you. And, and uh, just, uh, man, I'll tell you what, what an awesome victory this was for this DuPont Chevrolet. I want to thank uh, Pepsi, Quaker State, um, of course, DuPont, but uh, uh, GMAC Chevro Chevrolet. I want to thank Fritos, too. Uh, they're on board. We don't get a chance to thank them enough. But... I tell you what, it's pretty awesome to get our 100th win for Hendrick Motorsports. Uh, Rick said he wasn't going to be here when we did it, and unfortunately he's not. But John's here. <laughs> well, a dramatic win. What were you thinking when Rudd made his move? I was thinking... <laughs> I was thinking, man, Yates makes some horsepower. That's what I was thinking. Uh, you know, I, I, I was a little bit... You know, I know if I got the lead, I, I had the preferred line, but uh, he'd get some real momentum coming off the corner, and... Boy, when that thing would draft you, buddy, there's no holding it back. And he made a smart move. Uh, Ricky's, Ricky's such a great driver. He made a smart move, went to the high side of me uh, down in three and four, got a run. When he got inside me, I thought I was done, but I, I tried to step beside him. And luckily, I slowed his momentum down a little bit. I never drove into turn one as hard as I drove in that lap. The car went sideways. He checked up, and I just jumped back into it. The thing stuck, and uh, he was coming even there at the line. It was an incredible race. I tell you, uh, it's awesome to win ones like that. An incredible race, incredible finish. Jeff Gordon picks up career win number 55, moves into sixth on the all-time win list, number 100 for Hendrick Motorsports. Mike? Jeff Gordon celebrates in victory lane two weeks in a row as he closes in on the Winston Cup point lead. Jeff Gordon is the winner, and Chevy congratulates Jeff and the number 24 Monte Carlo team on their big win today. Here's the Chevrolet winning moment. That's Gordon. Keeps his foot down around turn one to repass Ricky Rudd. Steve? Hey Mike, thanks a lot. With Ricky Rudd. Ricky, take us through the, the next to last lap when you made your move on Jeff Gordon. Well, I'll be honest with you, the, the racetrack was changing so much during those caution delays, it was getting a little haze of film on the track. So the groove that had been working really wasn't working that good. Neither one of us were getting much traction. Uh, I really, I drove into three on the outside just to see because uh, I couldn't hold it down low, and I didn't expect to get the traction up there. Hindsight probably shouldn't have showed them everything. I probably should have right. held back, made that, that move that I made on the white flag, should have made it on the checker flag lap. But 
uh, it was it was a good run. The car really got good traction up there. Everybody on this Texaco Haviland team, but, you know, they worked their tails off. They deserve a win. We didn't get it today, but it was a good run for us. It was fun. It was exciting. Yes, to walk you through it. I can't really walk you through it because uh, I don't remember it all. I just remember being up on that steering wheel, uh, chasing that race car quite a bit. Uh, we drove. We, when I got on the inside of Jeff, we drove into one. Uh, we both carried so much speed in there. Uh, I needed some room to slide. Uh, he had the outside groove. I didn't have any room to slide at. I tried to drive any harder. I'd have slid out and wrecked both of us, and uh, neither one of us needed that. Thanks, Ricky. Great run. Let's go to Dick Bergeron. Sterling Marlin almost won this one for Dodge. Matching your best finish this year, another third. How do you feel, bud? Well, I feel kind of down. We, uh, you know, yesterday evening, we didn't think we had that good a car, and all the boys on the Coors Light Dodge team, you know, really worked hard and uh, changed some stuff this morning, got it going. And uh, if a cost had come out, come out, I think we'd won it. And it just took our car about a lap to and restarts to get going. And uh, went out in one on that restart, and it just got real wiggly. And uh, I like to wreck time to a four. And, and Jeff got by us, and uh, we closed back on the end, but uh, just wasn't, wasn't enough time. The disappointment shows on his face. To Matt with Shauna. With Shauna Robinson, you finished 34th, but your goal today was to finish. Congratulations. It was. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't great to run the Aaron's car at, at the back all day, but when we were in traffic, we weren't necessarily in the way. We learned, and that's what I needed to do. I mean, thank you, Michael Cranifus, for giving me the chance to be here, and thank you, Aaron's, for sponsoring me for this race and for three more in the future. You know, now my focus is on Chicago because here we come Chicago, and now I'm that much smarter there. We got a new announcement of a sponsor there for one race. So at least I have an outlook, and that's what it's about. I don't have a wrecked race car. I learned a lot. That's what I needed to do. What did you learn? I learned that I like different adjustments. I learned I like a bar change a little better than a shock change. Um, we learned that that last change we made was made the car very loose. And uh, I, I held on to it when I spun, which obviously I'm glad I did that. But, um, you know, it was, a, it was a, me, a day accomplished, and I ran 400 miles, and that was another thing I needed to do. She accomplished her goals, finished 31st to Steve. Well, Matt, at the beginning of the show, Mike Joyce said that Ryan Newman was going to come here and run the ARCA race, but those plans changed, and you wind up in the top five. Tell us how you did it. Well, just a great run for the Altel Ford. I want to first thank Tom Miller. He's back home in uh, Mooresville, and without him, we couldn't do this. And uh, Roger Penske here today, obviously a great racetrack, and... Uh, um, just a lot of patience today to, to qualify 12th was, was, a, was a, a, a victory for us in the, in the first place. And then to be able to stay on the lead lap all day and finish fifth is uh, you know, just great. Got to thank Penske Engines, too. We had a great motor on the head. Good run, Ryan. Let's go back upstairs to Mike. Jeff Gordon along with Muhammad Ali celebrating in victory lane. Wow. Second, second, 29th. A win and a win the last five weeks for Jeff Gordon. Shauna Robinson, first woman in Winston Cup since 1989, gets congratulations from her crew. Did Gordon get the point lead? Stick around and find out. Well, you're seeing a lot of hot shots today on the track, and Hot Shots is next on FX. Jeff Gordon was the predator on the last lap against Ricky Rudd. Another diehard performance, and that's uh, tonight's lineup on FX, and kind of a summary of our show today. Here's how they finished in Michigan. Hendrick Motorsports 100th victory, Jeff Gordon. Yeah, and I, I just can so impressed with Sterling's run, Ryan Newman's run, Dave Blaney's run. Hunt Strickland. And Hunt Strickland, I didn't that? mean to skip over him. No. What a great day for uh, Junie Dunleavy. I'm just so happy for those guys. Spencer Spun comes back. Yep. Matt Kenseth on that fuel strategy. That caution comes out, pretty much wipes that out. He ends up top 15. Jeff Green and Jason Leffler, another top 20, two in a row. And Dale Jarrett, way back there in 18th. Mm -hmm. Not good for his point lead. Yep. Tony Stewart, couple laps down, his march toward the front of the points, uh, derailed temporarily. 35 cars running at the finish, plus mm -hmm. Elliott Sadler and a few more, and Rusty Wallace. Dale Earnhardt Jr. not finishing, ended nope. up 39. Did Gordon get the point lead? Survey says. Yeah, he did by 26. And not only did he win a lot of money here today, he pays a $60,000 bonus from Winston for the points leader to win the race. Wow. Well, we'll see you next week at Pocono. Here is Dick Bergeron. Well, Jeff Gordon is showing the kind of dominance that he has shown in the past when he won championships. And people wondered if Gordon could possibly win another championship without Ray Evernham. Answer, they are doing incredibly well this year. The pit crew, one little flaw, certainly didn't hurt him. To Steve Burns. Well, Dick, Jeff Gordon certainly is on a torrid streak, but how about 22-year-old Ryan Newman? He goes to Charlotte, sits on the pole for the Coca-Cola 600, but crashes early, said it was his fault, comes back here to Michigan, runs all 400 miles, and comes home with a top-five finish. Matt Yoakum.
We'll see the front row finish right where they started. 1-2, the 24 leading the 28. But Ricky Rudd again showing the 28 team is back. Except now he's over 88. They hope to go to Pocono and break through. Get Rudd's first win since 1998 at Martinsville in September. And get Fatback Michael McSwain, his crew chief, his first career victory. Chris? All right, in 1998, Jeff Gordon, with 13 wins, did for NASCAR what Tiger Woods has done for golf. He'll turn 30 years old in August and continues to rack up incredible victories. Back in that run, in 98, after 13 races, he had three wins. We've completed our 14th race. He now has three wins. He won the Winston in a backup car. He had an extra pit stop here. Right? Right. NASCAR made him go back because of a loose lug nut. No stopping Jeff Gordon at this point. <laughs> I hate it for the competitors, but the good thing about it was I did see where Ricky Rudd, as well as Sterling Marlin, did challenge him right there midway toward the end of the race. So it's not over yet. It's a long way from being over, Chris. All right, but the way Gordon is going, he'll go for three wins in a row uh, in Pocono. He has been the last driver to win three in a row. That was back in 98. Friday, NASCAR Winston Cup qualifying on Fox Sports Net, 2.30 Eastern from Pocono on Saturday. The Arca race at 4 Eastern and the final Winston Cup practice for Sunday's race. That'll be on FX. And don't forget from Kentucky, the NASCAR Bush Series, 7.30 Eastern under the lights on FX. And then next Sunday, NASCAR this morning at 10 Eastern. And you'll see the race from Pocono. Jeremy Mayfield, the defending champion, 12.30 Eastern with the pre-race show. It's been an incredible weekend here. And Jeff Gordon with his 55th career victory, the most among active drivers and breaking the streak of nine straight weeks in which Dale Jarrett was the points leader. In this race, Dale Jarrett winding up 18th. Shauna Robinson gave it a run and completed, finishing 34th. But GQ's candidate for Man of the Year, Athlete of the Year, Jeff Gordon, is the man of the moment from Michigan, a day that began with Muhammad Ali, the co-honorary starter, wishing the pole sitter luck. And once they got going, a race that had eight cautions, tying the record for this track, saw Jeff Gordon hold off Ricky Rudd in a special FX finish. And Brooklyn, west of Motown, was a showdown between these two. Gordon winning. Thanks for watching on FX. We'll see you next week on Fox from Pocono.